ABC Sports presents the 1981 World Series. From Yankee Stadium in New York, the Dodgers and the Yankees. The Dodgers rode home one power in the West to sweep three games in Los Angeles and take a three game to two lead. Jerry Royce growing stronger each inning in game five. Slammed the door on the Yankees two to one. The winning margin in game five. This home run by Steve Yeager. The Dodgers leading three games to two. They move into Yankee Stadium in New York tonight for game six. It may be a chilly night in New York, but Yankee Stadium is filled and the partisanship, I think, will be very obvious as they're trying to root their Yankees into a win so they can stay alive. It'll be a big ball game, exciting game, and this ABC Exports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet, who invites you to see all the good things for 1982 at your local Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. By Light Beer, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. By Gillette, makers of Right Guard Solid with Action Trigger Formula. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. And by General Electric, GE makes products that make life easier and better. At GE, we bring good things to life. Last week, when the Yankees had won two in a row here at Yankee Stadium and headed west, it seemed they were in total command. But they get out west, they lose two street fights, one pitcher's duel, and seemingly they're poised. Question is, Will they have their poise back in their home ballpark tonight? They get Greg Nettles back at third base. They get Jerry Mumphy back in center field. They've got the ballpark where they know they can win. The Dodgers, on the other hand, riding the home run, had four. But remember, three of the four were to left center field in Dodger Stadium by Messrs. Guerrero, Yeager, and Say. The general speculation seems to be those three home runs might not have gone out of Yankee Stadium. And tonight it appears the wind is blowing in from left field and blowing toward right, which could further diminish some of the right-handed power of the Los Angeles lineup. So we'll see what happens as we look ahead to a night where the temperature is going to start in the mid-50s and probably go to the high 40s. The humidity is quite high, but the enthusiasm is at a fever pitch here in the Bronx as Chuck Mangione now will lend his brilliant trumpet to the playing of our national anthem. Many of you remember Chuck Mangione from his performances and the composition of much of the music that was featured at the Winter Olympic Games in Lake Placid in 1980. 
The umpires have had their conference with the respective representatives and managers of the two ball clubs. The wind is continuing to blow quite briskly and swirling considerably as we move in from the outside to the infield, and it may be a problem in moments of this ball game. To throw out the first ball tonight, the ceremonial first pitch, one of the great names in Yankee history, the little man that some say is the best to ever play his position. Former shortstop, now Yankee broadcaster, Phil Rizzuto. So the scooters chores are done. A rousing hand from the crowd, and we're waiting now for the Yankees to take the field as we get underway in Game Six of the 1981 World Series. Now you can save an average $600 on the 81 Chevy Citation, America's best-selling front-wheel drive car, with new lowered 12.9 percent financing, and special dealer incentives let you save even more on Citation. You can also save an average of $600 on the 82 Cavalier with new lower 12.9% financing. So lower your cost on these advanced front-wheel drive cars now. Only at participating Chevy dealers. Chevy makes good things happen. Hey, what you eating? A neat candy bar. Boy, is it crispy. <sighs> Sounds good. It smells peanutty. What do you call it? What you call it? What you gonna call it? That's right. What's right? The name. What name? What you gonna call it? You forgot the name. What you gonna call it? The totally different crunchy bar of peanutty tasting crisp drenched in chocolate. What you gonna call it from Hershey? You can ask for it by name. I ask some of that. Some of what? Well, Casey was winning. Hank Aaron was beginning. One Robbie going out, one coming in. Kiner and Midget Goodell, the Thumper and Mel Parnell, and Ike was the only one winning down in Washington. I'm talking baseball, Lazuski Campanella, talking baseball, the man and Bobby Feller, the Scooter, the Barber, and the Duke. They knew them all from Boston to Dubuque. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Starting lineup for the Dodgers, leading off the catalyst, Davey Lopes, Bill Russell batting second, Steve Garvey batting third, incredibly back in the lineup, Ron Say batting fourth, then Dusty Baker, then Pedro Guerrero, who authored a home run on Sunday, Rick Monday follows him, and then maybe the MVP, who knows, Steve Yeager, and finally, pitcher Bird Hooten, Keith. Tommy John has just come in now from the, uh, the uh, New York bullpen. He's took his time warming up and took his time coming in. So that's why the Yankees have not taken the field defensively as yet. So while we're waiting for them, have a look at the umpires. You'll have a National League umpire back at the plate tonight. It is Dick Stello. Dick calling the balls and strikes. American League's Larry Barnett at first. National League's Nick Colosi at second. Terry Cooney at third. American League. Down the left field line, Doug Harvey, National League. And down the right field line, Rich Garcia of the American League. A roaring thunderstorm passed through last night. When the ball game was called yesterday, it had not been raining at all. But the weather forecasters were so obvious in their prediction there would be heavy rain last night. They went ahead and they called the ball game because of the wet conditions that existed from the previous day's rain. And sure enough, about 8 o'clock last night, 8 to 9, there was a huge thunderstorm that came through and pummeled the city. But today has been quite comfortable, and Bob Watson, who might be the Yankee MVP, is at first base. He's had a fine World Series, his first. Over at second base for New York, Willie Randolph. Randolph has been troublesome for the Dodger pitchers. He has not swung at a single first pitch so far in this World Series. He's really been making a pitch. At shortstop, the young man who has been quite a story for New York since Bucky Dent was hurt and done a heck of a job for them, Larry Milburn. And down at third base, the presence of this man may add a great deal to the New York fortunes before the night is done. Greg Nettles, though in batting practice, he did not hit okay. the ball deep to the right side. He hit it well to the left Bobby side. Bolton. Grave Winfield, whose bat has been relatively silent so far in this series, but his defense has been outstanding in left. In center field, Jerry Mumphrey, who disappeared from the lineup, 
in a couple of instances that raised a lot of questions but he's back there tonight and they'll need him with the wind whirling around out in the huge acreage and Reggie Jackson will be in right field back of the plate it is Rick Cerrone who has had a fine World Series and on the mound a master craftsman Tommy John. The reflection on Tommy on the season and in the ball game in which he opposed Bert Hooten. He left the ball game with a one to nothing lead. Sink a ball pitcher and Davy Lopes will lead it off for Los Angeles. Jim Palmer said it while ago. The Dodgers have to be patient. They have to be willing to take the ball to the right side of this ballpark. It is just simply too big down the left side. Bill Russell to the on deck circle and we're about ready to go with game number six. The dimensions 312 down the left field line but then it falls away very sharply to 387 and then 430 and then 417. Then you get back into right center it gets shorter and shorter until you reach the corner. And so we begin the Dodgers leading three games to two. And the first pitch breaks off inside for ball one to Davy Lopes. Manny Mota coaching at first, Danny Ozark at third for Los Angeles. Sharp shot, medals at third. One out. We'll see whether or not that is true because there is history to indicate. It doesn't necessarily bounce. The home team has an edge. Bill Russell hitting 190 in the World Series, as you can see. There's a strike. First out was a ground ball to third. If I recall, Tommy John got 10 of the first 12 or 13 batters last week to hit the ball on the ground. That's foul on the edge, 0 and 2. Well, he had 14 out of the first 18 so when he has a sinker ball working he can be very tough and I think that's one thing we have to look for the balls that were hit hard in game two were all balls that were behind when Tommy was behind in the count and it was either three and one two and oh where he had to throw a strike you see Nettles playing his usual deep position at third and John is outside to make it one and two and we talked in, in really in game two after Nettles had made all the outstanding plays in game one that you have to bunt and bring Nettles in to be successful against a guy like Tommy John. Count holds on the foul ball at one and two. The temperature this afternoon was in the middle 60s. It has been sinking and sinking and sinking. That'd be a coat. <laughs> you need it. Punch to the right side. Randolph started to his right, comes back in time to make the play. Two down. Two ground balls. And Howard were playing on a normal infield grass. And here you can see Tommy ahead in the count. Number six. Good low and away sinker. Russell goes with it. But it's too good a pitch. Doesn't get much on it. Randolph breaking for a second. Easily back and makes it the throw to Watson. Steve Garvey has been hitting well. His numbers reflected there. But he has not hit well with runners on base. Though in all fairness to Steve, there haven't been that many instances where he has had a chance to deliver with one as a ball. Yeah, I think another thing very important tonight is with the tarp being all, all and then you, there you see manager Bob Lemon of the Yankees, with the tarp being on, a lot of times you have the moisture gather underneath the tarp. The infield will even be softer than it normally is here in Yankee Stadium tonight. That's beat foul down the third baseline to amplify on what I just said. Garvey is eight for 12 with the bases empty, one for eight with runners on. I think there's a fairly good explanation for that is when there's nobody on, a pitcher has a tendency to relax. He'll give him a little bit better. There's one up the middle for a base hit. He just stroked it. Exactly. And as I was saying, you get a little bit better pitch to hit, but when you get a couple guys on, to try to make the better pitch and, and a lot of times the batter is anxious and will go after a bad pitch and end up making it out. And here you see a ball up in the strike zone and Garvey as we've seen all series goes right up the middle with it. In game two Tommy started he retired the first 12 before Garvey broke the string in the fifth with a single. 
Now this is a very good pitcher for Ron Say to return after the beating against. A control pitcher, not a flame throw. Hit well to left. It's going to sink in front of Winfield for a base hit. And so Garvey and Say go back to back with singles against Tommy John in the top of the first inning. And you saw Ron go up there with perfect confidence. Well, that he did, and he got a good pitch up again. You'll see it's up in the strike zone. A little bit away, but he not far enough, and he just wraps it to left field. Now, Dusty Baker. 0 for 10 in the series with runners on base. Struck out five of his last 10. He struck. The pitch is inside and low for ball one. Another point on say is that he gets a chance to play one more game at least which means he won't have all winter to wonder whether or not he's going to be gun shot. I think he's already proven it to himself. Inches low and away two balls and no strikes. I think it's very important uh, like he said he'll come back with that batting helmet with the protector. We had Gary Renneke hit a couple years ago came actually with a football mask because he was hit in the jaw. Baker fouls it off. But all your good hitters, they come right back. And I've seen Brooks Robinson when he used to play for the Orioles hit many times in the head. Next day they want to get back in the lineup as soon as they can because they want to ease the doubts in their own mind. Some do, but Ducky Wucky Medwick, the Hall of Famer, was never the same hitter again after he was beamed by Bob Bone of the Dodgers. Baker hits it in the air to the right side. It hangs up there for Reggie Jackson. Then moves it around. Reggie holds his ground and he makes the catch. And the Dodgers lead two in the top of the first inning. Coming up, Randolph Humphrey Winfield for New York. You know, baseball is the same in Japan as it is in America. You played nine innings. Three strikes and you're out. Well, out. And after the game, there's nothing like a beer. And when Numa's in town, I treat him to light beer from Miller because it tastes great. Mm, cream. Ah. Yeah, I know it's less filling, but we drink it because it tastes great. Cut him down. Listen, Numa, it tastes great. See, I'll cut him down. Oy. All right, it's less filling. Mm. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And cut him down. Want to know four ways to help get better gas mileage? Tell us, Mr. Goodrench. First, air up. Keeping tires at recommended pressure can help save up to a gallon of gas per tank. Next, tune up. That can help save up to two gallons. Wow! Then, clean up. Get new filters. And slow up. You can go farther on a tank full. Keep that great GM feeling. Thanks and tank full, Mr. Goodrench. With genuine GM parts. Starting lineup for the Yankees, leading off Willie Randolph, back in the lineup, batting second, Jerry Mumphrey, Dave Winfield struggling, batting third, the big man, Reggie Jackson, batting fourth, the big man of the series for the Yanks, Bob Watson, fifth, Greg Nettles back in there, batting sixth, Rick Cerrone batting seventh, surprising Larry Milburn batting eighth, and the ninth hitter, Tommy John. Defensively for Los Angeles, Steve Garvey will be at first base. Same infield you've seen all along with Davey Lopes up at second base. Jay Johnstone gave him some pine tar for his glove after his three errors. <laughs> Bill Russell is at shortstop. And the miracle of the day, Ron Say is at third. Had to wait until literally game time before we knew for sure he'd be there. But he's there. Dusty Baker is out in left field, very steady and dependable. Pedro Guerrero is in center field. Not a whole lot of experience there, particularly in this park. And Rick Mundy, with left-handed power, is in right field. With Steve Yeager, as Howard indicated earlier, a chance to be the MVP after not playing very much. And on the mound, Bert Putin. And third base, Joe Altavilli. Putin was the bad luck loser in the second game. An unearned run scored. He left the game. It was 1 0 New York. Big question on Bird is whether or not the extra rest will have any particular impact. It might make him stronger and sharper. And on the other hand, it might not. We'll see. We'll know early, I think. As Willie Randolph comes to the plate, his only hits have been in game four, both for the opposite field. He's walked seven times, and I said in 23 appearances, he has not taken a swing at the first pitch. Well, that batting average is very misleading because with the seven walks and he's been on, I think, on a couple of errors, 
out of maybe 22 times, he's almost on been, been on base half the time. And as we've said all along in this series, for the Yankees to really be offensively successful, it really helps him really can get on base. In the game that Hooten pitched here in New York, a gust of wind comes whipping in and Bert breaks his delivery motion and scuffles around on the mound to get a little bit of footing. But in that game, too, which Hooten pitched against New York, Randolph was in the number eight position. Mumphrey was the leadoff man. The first pitch from Hooten, ducks in low for ball one. The flags are pretty much straight out and go right and right center. Pitch is inside for ball two. And Yeager goes out. See what the problem is. Burke does not appear comfortable. Well, Keith, when you, when you first go out on the mound, right in front of the pitching rubber, normally you you have to kick out in front of it. And I've always felt that the first batter of the game can sometimes be the most important because you don't have any idea of how you're going to feel. And obviously, if you can get him out and be able to throw strikes, it's very important. There's a strike on the outside corner to make it two and one. He has now moved a little bit on the pitching rubber too, Jim. He's moved to the extreme right-hand corner as we look from home plate or left as you look in there. Well, if you take a pitcher, I know personally there are some mounds, uh, this one here in Yankee Stadium, that I like very much. And there are also other mounds, say in Detroit and other towns, that you do have difficulty throwing. And Burt's right over the top. This would, should be a pretty good mound for him. Alex Wall now three and two. Three and two. Walking. That is the eighth time that Willie has had a free pass to first base, and now Jerry Mumphrey, the center fielder, number two hitter, with Winfield at the on deck circle. We saw six pitches, and really his most effective pitch, which is a knuckle curve, he has yet to throw. Of course, the reason for that is he, he got behind in the count, and three and two wanted to throw a strike and wasn't able to. He missed with a high fastball. Dodgers expect bunt. Say in tight at third, Garvey will be coming. If Steve does not come, holding the runner, and Say does. Mumphrey was suddenly. Unexpectedly benched after a torturous evening last Friday against Valenzuela when he steadfastly refused to go with the pitch and seek to go to right. Runner goes, pitch is swung on and missed. Yeager's throw to the left field side of the bag, and Randolph steals it. Now, Jim, the Yankees with their backs to the wall have determined to try to make things happen. So they had Randolph running. Well, that's right, Howard. And of course, Hooten has helped him out by walking Randolph and then getting behind Mumphrey. One and all counts, a pretty good count to run on. You know that Hooten, a veteran, is going to try to throw a strike, which he did. Mumphrey protected Randolph very well. And Willie with a good slide. Yeager made a fairly good throw. It's just a little bit to the left. And Randolph is the best base runner. And the man to play right now is their second base. Randolph on the corner now. And a 1 1 count to Mumphrey. Fouls it away into the Dodger dugout. And they'd still like to get him as far as third. Where Winfield could deliver him with a ball to the outfield. There's Big David. The leaguer. Not only because of his failure to hit in the series as well as he did in the regular season, but for other reasons as well. One and two. Big lead by Randolph at second. And the pitch is foul back. And we still have not seen the knuckle curveball, and I, I would assume the reason for it here is that Putin would like to get Mumphrey to hit the ball to the left side so the runner will not advance. And if you throw a curveball, the left-handed hitter and he pulls the ball to first or second 
you'll have the situation you talked about Winfield up with a man on third. And in the first inning they're usually going to play back and give you the run. Taps it foul. And there you saw the first knuckle curveball of the evening. When he is right he has the ability to make that curveball. Normally when you throw a right handed curveball to a left hander it comes in towards him. But Hooten can make the ball either come in or go away. And that's one of the reasons he's been so, so successful over his career. He has a pitch that not too many pitchers throw. Comes back with a fastball inside to make it two balls and two strikes. Burke's fastball coming in on the jugs gun at 88. And that's about his, his range. Well, that's what he was throwing last Wednesday here. So it doesn't seem to have the extra rest to make him any stronger. It seems to have affected his control so far. The pitch is low to make it a full count, three and two. Well, Burke's throwing a lot of pitches in the first two batters. The Dodgers had Garvey and Say with successive singles. And two out. He's trying to do. Ball is looped into short center field. Guerrero coming hard. Good speed, and Pedro makes the catch. And you've got one out, and Randolph has to stay at second base. Pedro walking back a little gamely, as if he might have pulled something as he sprinted in. Maybe a little soft and in some spots a little slick in the outfield, though everybody seemed to be getting good traction when they were out working out. You see him dragging his leg a little bit. Well, on a wet outfield like tonight, I think most of the times outfielders will complain that when they do try to get a jump on the ball, they will slip. And that's all it takes sometimes. And it's not extremely cold, but colder than it was in Los Angeles, and it's an easy way to pull a muscle. Winfield has all of right center open. Hits it sharply to left. Baker has to stab it and whips his throw back in, and you've got two out, and Randolph is still at second. When you're in a slump, that's how it goes for you. Winfield hit that ball a shot. And Busty Baker, you see, making a nice catch. What happens on line drive sometimes? They are what they call knuckleballs, just like uh, if you ever watch a knuckleball pitcher being caught by a catcher you sometimes see the extreme difficulty the ball will get out to the left fielder and start knuckling and Baker made a nice catch it didn't seem to be that that tough a play but as it turned out tough ball to handle Reggie Jackson is at the plate now Randolph at second and two out except for the home run off Steve Howe Everything Reggie has hit pretty much has been up the middle or the left center. And Hooten is high and tight and Dexy. Usually sets up a good fastball away. But Reggie usually responds to hitting the dirt <laughs> with a hit. Well, that he does. That that ball was not as close as it may seem. Reggie, of course, is kind of diving towards the plate. Wants to be able to reach the pitch on the outside corner. Got it outside. Reggie swinging and missing for one and one. I think the reason that you mentioned that Reggie hit the ball left field is that the Dodgers, since 1977 and 1978, they've changed their book of how they they want to pitch to Reggie. They pitched him inside that those both years, and I think he hit four or five home runs. So they've tried to stay away from him. They'll give him the double or the single to the left, but not the home run. Bird is outside, two and one. The center fielder Guerrero is way over in right center. I mean, way over. They're actually playing Reggie like they would play a healthy Greg Nettles. Yep. Way around in right center to pull the ball, even though he's hit every ball to left, which is kind of. Hard to understand. And she's outside again. Three balls and one strike. Well, he had a double down the left field line in Los Angeles, and it's wide open too because Dusty has shifted over as well. Foul back. 
So here's Bert Hooten now, three and two on another batter. First two, Randolph and Mumphrey went three and two. Winfield lined out to Baker. Now he's three and two on the fourth hitter in the inning. Randolph edging off second. I think with the first base open, you might see a, a knuckle curveball in this situation, they not move, giving in to Reggie. They move Guerrero over, but it doesn't matter. Hooten blows him away with a good fastball as Reggie swings through it. And so the Yankees are turned away at the bottom of the first inning, stranding one after one inning of play and no score. Cannon presents the new AE1 program. Watch Tracy Austin put Cannon's new camera to the test. It's more camera, more versatile. For the pro photographer. It's even more advanced. And for tennis pro Tracy Austin. It's even simpler to use. Here, catch. The new program mode makes it so easy. I'm always ready to shoot like a pro. The new AE1 program. So advanced, it's simple. And more of both. Canon. The official camera of the World Series. On a summer's evening in 1924 in Lynn, Massachusetts, perhaps the most significant game in the long history of baseball was played. It wasn't the pitching that was so extraordinary, nor the hitting, and the fielding, well, it was less than exemplary. No, what made this game truly historic was the time of day, nightfall. For it was on this night that this small group of GE engineers ushered in the era of night baseball. Baseball under the lights. And while the names of Hugo Fee and Tommy Perkins and Hank Innes will never be recorded in the Hall of Fame, it was this earnest band of GE pioneers that made possible for us all the many brilliant nights to come. No score as we go to the top of the second inning for Pedro Guerrero, Rick Mundy, and Steve Yeager. Tommy John pitching for New York. And he gave up successive singles with two out to Garvey and Say at the top of the first inning. Then Baker lofted a fly ball to right field and Reggie Jackson. Keith, both clubs had first inning opportunities. The Dodgers got theirs on consecutive Garvey Say singles with two out. Baker flied to right. But the Yankees, in the pattern of those L.A. games, had a man on second with nobody out. They never bunted him to third. Otherwise, they might have gotten a run. And once again, they blew a wide open opportunity. That's been their history in this series. As Bird Hoop. The quiet Texan. Tommy John delivers outside the Guerrero, ball one. Ball is hit to right. Jackson goes back. Got room. One out. Wind's going that way. So the ball hit to the right side is going to get some help tonight. Number 16. There you see Reggie making a simple catch. He looked at it the second time around to make sure that he had it. Might have had a little trouble. Well, I've always felt with it with Reggie wearing glasses, sometimes the glare of the lights bothers him. Well, here's Rick Mundy, who's two for ten in the series. But he does have power. Hits that off the end of the bat, cues it to Milbert. And two down. The young man with the devastating left hook, particularly to the liver area, Jerry Cooper. Setting up potentially a fight against Joe Bugner, which sounds kind of ludicrous on the surface, but it may happen. But sooner or later, the showdown. Julie against Owens. What? Joe Bugner? Joe Bugner, yeah. I thought you were going to ask what he has in common with George Steinbrenner. A good left. No, George doesn't have that kind of left. Steve Yeager, who hit a home run to right field at Yankee Stadium. This time he pulls it to the shortstop Milburn. Larry throws on the bounce and gets away from Watson. And Yeager's aboard. Error shortstop. Fairly simple play. 
We saw Melbourne in the series in Los Angeles. Throws coming up just a little bit short. There's another one. And Watson can't handle it for the error. The Dodger pitcher, Bert Hoot. Wrapping his bat in fine tar. I watched batting practice from up here tonight because I, there were two or three people I really wanted to see. You see the, the Dodger catcher, Steve Yeager, hustling on down the line. Steve has pretty good speed. You can see the ball was there in plenty of time for the out, but bounced away. But Bert hit the ball well in batting practice. This time he just squibs it back to Tommy John. Well, there you go. So the Dodgers have now stranded a total of three base runners in the ball game. After an inning and a half, there is no score. Marcus, I see <coughs> Whisker. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. I trot. Next time, Jose, give it the pivot. Atra. The Gillette Atra razor pivots to continually adjust and hug every curve, contour, and angle. No other razor shaves closer and more comfortably than Atra. I give it the pivot. Give it the pivot, Atra. Give it the pivot with Gillette Atra. Ah, new car. Chevy Chevette. Must have cost a fortune for the fancy wheels and white striped tires. Standard, Father. Radio. Reclining seats <laughs> on your salary. Standard, Father, along with front disc brakes and radio tires. And these fancy stripes? $89 extra. And why would you spend $89 on stripes? The devil made me do it. Oh, I see. Chevy makes <laughs> good things. <laughs> the devil, you say. Happen. How's it cold tonight? Oh, don't ask. I got you some cough medicine. <laughs> But I'm also sniffling, sneezing, aching. My head is stuffy. I'm feverish, and I gotta rest. I was supposed to get a sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you could rest medicine? That's NyQuil. It relieves a cough as well as this, plus all my other symptoms. NyQuil. Would you get me some? Be right back. NyQuil. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine. Saturday, Maggie's got a full house and an empty kitchen. There's nothing to eat. Well, you can have some prunes. Prunes make me despondent. Maggie! <laughs> well, that's the George Washington Bridge. All lit up and splendiferous. It's 50th anniversary of the GW last week. And just down the road a ways, Yankee Stadium. Number 28. Bob Watson. ABC Sunday Night Movies of the month of November. There's some good ones, aren't there? Goodbye Girl, Grease, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and Moonraker. For your pleasure, right here on ABC. Bob Watson, 412. He has not struck out so far in this World Series. And Bird Newton is outside with the first pitch for ball one. Another interesting thing about Bobby Watson and what he has done in this series only in two occasions has he come to the plate with runners on base and failed to advance them. Bit the outside, two and one. Watson thinks the ball was outside. What they've done with Bob the last couple of games is they've gotten ahead and then they've gotten him out inside. Uh, Really, the first into the first three games. Wild away. Saw a breaking ball, and he hurt them with balls out over the plate when they got behind in the count. He was two for four in the game two. One single off Hoot. The count is now two and two. Continues to throw a lot of pitches. Three and two again. That is the that's the fourth man that he's gone to three and two with. Two pitch, no score. Bottom of the second.
Say it third. Gonna bounce it. Got it. Garvey took it in the stomach and held on. Goodness knows how many errors Steve Garvey saves at first base during the course of the season. Tough play for Ronnie. A long throw. Look where he is, all the way back behind the coaching box practically. First base umpire Larry Barnett waited a while before he made the call to make sure that Garvey had it. Here's Greg Nettles. Can measure the importance of this man to the Yankees. When he got hepatitis last year, the Yanks weren't the same team. They haven't won a World Series game since he was out. First pitch hits it sharply to Davy Lopes. And so Davy survives the test in the early going. He handles the first ground ball rather cleanly. You notice that Greg did not hit to the right side in batting practice, Jim, which could only mean he's favoring his thumb. And he didn't get around good on that one. Well, it was a breaking ball, and uh, you could see it after he hit the ball that his hand was almost off the bat. This is something uh, he has said to Charlie Lau, the batting instructor, is trying to get him to do, but that's not his normal batting. Spot. Rick Cerrone is in there. And Rick had stepped away in time. I thought time was called, but I guess not. Ball one. That's a strike. One and one. Dorothy Hamill. It's foul. You still seeing Dorothy? I know. Terry Royce, who pitched an absolutely brilliant game on Sunday. Why did you say no three times? For emphasis. <laughs> Ground ball. Shortstop Bill Russell. In the dirt again, Steve Garvey comes in it cleanly. So, Yankees going on. People trust Seiko technology for bold sports watches that perform brilliantly even 100 meters beneath the sea. People trust Seiko for slim dress watches with every timekeeping function you'll probably ever need. People trust Seiko for watches that are as finely crafted as they are technologically advanced. In fact, people trust Seiko more than any other watch. At your authorized dealer. I do one thing. I kick this ball through those two poles. Do one thing all the time. You get to be great. Like Kentucky Fried Chicken. They don't try to do everything. Just chicken and no one else does it tender and juicy the Colonel's way. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do it right for you. I do kicking right. They do chicken right. Kentucky Fried Chicken, we do chicken right. Like many married couples, Tom and Mary Ross both worked to pay their mortgage. All state update, mortgage protection. Only Tom's life was insured. So when Mary died, Tom couldn't pay the mortgage alone and had to sell their home. If you're a working couple, it could happen to you too. So All State Life offers joint mortgage protection. One policy that covers both breadwinners for less than two policies cost. All State's joint mortgage protection life insurance. For life, home or auto, you're in good hands with All State. When you're in a circumstance like this with so much at stake, the intangibles make a lot of difference. Before the game, Bob, you could talk to Reggie. Was the emotion the same, Reggie, in that mini-series against Milwaukee when the Yankees had to win that final game? Could you compare it to this or not? I say it's about the same. I would say that we may be a little bit looser tonight so far up to this point, but Bobby, I think that the one thing that I worry about is that this ball club's come back so often, so many times. It's always won the big game or the game it had to win. And every once in a while, you think you may catch a bad break or a bad bounce, a bad call, or something may go the other way in an either-or situation. And you just may run out one day. But uh, if we get a few breaks tonight, I know the ball club's ready to play. Reggie was a bit winded when that interview was made. He had just come out of the batting cage. The game is being held up for just a moment. We have had a power hit that affected uh, some of the lights here in the stadium and as well as some of the operation in our television trucks as well. So there are several lights that are right now dark 
around the perimeter of the stadium and they're waiting to get them back on. So the Yankees are afield and they'll try to stay loose. And I can tell you this telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. And today is the 55th birthday of the commissioner. Picks up the phone to check out with Tom Villani in our booth. See what Villani knows about the power hit. They'll probably blame Bowie for this. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> So while we're waiting for the for the lights to be restored, Howard spent a moment or two with Happy Bert Hooten before the ball game. Bird, first of all, characterize yourself as a pitcher. Howard, I wouldn't characterize myself as an overpowering pitcher. I like to get ahead of hitters. I, uh, as everybody knows, I throw a knuckle curveball and. Uh, uh, that is my pitch. My main pitch is my out pitch, whether I throw it or not. And uh, I've got to show hitters that I can get it over anytime I want, whether I'm ahead of them or behind them. And uh, uh, when I'm doing that, or even showing it to them off the plate, I think I'm quite effective. What is the knuckle curve? A knuckle curve is uh, it is a true knuckle ball, so to speak. Uh, I actually do put my knuckles on the balls on the seams and. Uh, when I release it, I put a forward rotation on it, and I get the curveball effect on it. It's no, it's not a flutter ball like most uh, knuckle balls are, but it is an actual curveball. Pre-game comments of the Dodgers pitcher tonight, Bert Hooten. The game still being held up. The Yankees have now come in from the field to, into the dugout, where it's a little bit warmer. We've got a timeout. Let's take this break. Recently, Green. All right, we've got lights are back on, I guess. As far as we can tell, the Yankees have resumed uh, their position on the field, loosening up. The wind continues to swirl, and you're getting some paper bits and pieces of debris blowing around. This is the coolest night that we have had, and it's also the least settled as far as the weather conditions are concerned. wind has been blowing pretty consistently in that direction since we came to the ballpark in late afternoon. Tommy John back on the mound now to loosen up. Tommy threw only five pitches in the second inning. He threw 15 in the first. Bert Hooten on the other hand has thrown a lot of pitches up there. Bert had 21 pitches in the first inning. He threw 12 more in the second so he's thrown 33 so far in the ball game. And we've been delayed here now the better part of eight minutes. Didn't bother Tommy. He told the umpires he was willing to pitch with the power fed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> he is indeed a craftsman at his trade, isn't he? That he is. I still don't think he's in a, as good a groove as he can be in while it seemed that Putin in the last inning came along and threw his knuckle curveball when he was behind in the count. He made some good pitches, seems to be settling down. Second time around for the Dodgers now. Top of the order, Davey Lopes, Bill Russell, and Steve Garvey. And we thank you. Steve Yeager with whom we spoke in the pregame show. Terribly interesting fellow. Wearing a beard, as you can see. He did not shave when the series started and therefore with the Dodgers now ahead three games to two he steadfastly refuses to remove the beard until and unless the Dodgers lose which he hopes will be never. That will be one of the great sports stories of this year. In fact Yeager should wind up the MVP in this World Series. My goodness. Well he attributes his success. He's played more in the last week as far as being a regular player than he did all year and he feels that has a lot of reason for him being so successful. Lopes lays it down to Stahl. He didn't get it down the left side where Nettles had shortened up a little on him took it down the right side and it just dribbled foul. 
Davey had in game three leadoff double, which ignited that three run outburst for them. But he is not a patient kind of a leadoff man at all. We've discussed that, Keith, you'll remember, evidenced by the lack of many walks in contrast with Randolph. But what Davy can do when he gets on, he's nine for nine in, in stolen bases or eight for eight in postseason play. And he also stole 20 out of 20 during two during the season. So he can do some base running. Outside, one and one on Baby Lopes. Baby bounced to the shortstop his first time. Nettle's going to cut it off. One out in the top of the third. With the play around home plate at Dodger Stadium, Jim, that might have gone down the field line. And we saw Nettles come in and again a nice play. Very important, not only the first hitter of the inning, but also he's Tommy Johns had trouble with Steve Garvey. And two for three, and he got a base hit already tonight. Russell goes to right, gonna sink for a base hit. That's hit number three for the Dodgers. So Billy's aboard, and here's Garvey. Steve single, first time up. Wouldn't be surprised if the pitch is in the strike zone to see Steve go after the first. Mr. Consistence. Tommy does like to get a strike on the first pitch. I think another thing we can look for, to go back to the Houston series where they were struggling in the fifth game. Tommy hit and run with Steve. Try to get something going off Nolan Ryan. He hit a single in the right field, first and third situation. Russell goes, ball bounces, he's out. Garvey swinging and missing. Well, that's your hit and run right there. Tommy made a good pitch with a breaking ball. Garvey couldn't lay the bat on it. And Russell, even though the, the throw bounces, is out easily at second. He was counting on Garvey being able to get some wood on the ball and hopefully, with the infielders moving, get the ball into the outfield. And create that first and third situation. I hope the fans noticed that Bill Russell did exactly what you suggested at the advent of the contest, Jim. Went to right. One and one to Garvey. With nobody aboard now and two up. Now that makes it look like Steve can't hit or it hasn't been hitting in the clutch, but that's really not representative. A hit. Foul to the plate, make it one and two. Steve, three out of four. <coughs> against Tommy John. Two and two. Well, what's so unique about Tommy John is that everybody knows what he's going to do. One of the writers asked Manny Moda, the hitting instructor for the Dodgers, how he'd hit him. He says, I wouldn't swing. That's a little tamper at third. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Just barely. Oh. He was lucky, Mr. Nettles, on that one. Well, he, he couldn't have made that play up. Exactly, and that's why he let the ball go, and here's experience. He knows he, he has no chance of throwing Steve out, so he lets the ball, and as you said, look at Missed it by about an inch. If it hits the bag, it is a fair ball. And that's where he was lucky. Exactly. Ron Say in the on deck circle for Los Angeles with two out, nobody on. He Russell had singled and was thrown out. He talked to me at length today, Ron, over at the hotel where the Dodgers are staying, about how Goose Gossage came over to see him in the clubhouse after the game and how Mrs. Gossage ran over to Mrs. Say immediately the accident happened. 2 2 pitch. Garvey hits it in the air to center field for Mumphrey. And there you have it. After two and a half innings of play in game six of the World Series no score at Yankee Stadium. We'll open your eyes. Great picture.
sure. What kind is of... RCA color track. Thought they only made the big ones. Guess you thought wrong. I have an RCA. Really? Big projection TV. Let RCA open your eyes. Really? From our smallest color track to our giant bright projection TV. What do you think? The picture's gorgeous, Bob. George. We'll open your eyes. Open your eyes. RCA. Blow away everything you ever heard about pickups and meet the revolutionary new size Chevy S10. There's never been a truck like it before. Chevy S10. 28 miles per gallon. 39 highway. The standard four-cylinder engine has higher EPA gas mileage ratings than any of the best-selling imports. Chevy S10. It offers optional V6 power. Power to tow twice as much as any import pickup. The new size Chevy S10. Order yours today. There's never been a truck like it before. Never! Chevy is the power in trucks. Now there's a place where they have their own authorized mechanics, quality parts and service, and prices you can afford. Now there's K-Care, found only at Kmart. Why not change to the tire you don't have to change? The KM Special Radial, with two fiberglass belts and aggressive tread design. Goes through rain, mud and snow, yet rides smooth on highways. Now the KM Special is sale priced as low as $31.97. Hey, we'll even rotate them every 5,000 miles at no charge. That's K-Care, only at Kmart. takes a little reading, but I'm sure you can get the message. Larry Milburn, Tommy John, and Willie Randolph for New York, bottom of the third inning, no score. Bert Hooten has thrown 33 pitches so far in two innings. to Garvey. He'll do it himself. One out. Number 25, Tommy John. Tomorrow night, if we need it, game seven, and it's the matchup of the great rookies. Fernando Valenzuela, Dave Rigetti. I thought last Friday night's baseball game was one of the guttiest performances I have ever seen by Valenzuela and by Tom Lasorda. Here's T.J. You realize Yankee pitches or the pinch hitters have come up with 20 runners on and produce no hits? Rogers, what did you say, Jim? They're 0 for 35 or something like that? There's Fernando, who will get the call tomorrow night. Fernando in his hideaway. Otherwise, his next start will probably be opening day next year. <laughs> That's right. One and one, uh, two strikes. Newton has settled down. I think something we'll have to watch for is in the seventh inning of, of the Wednesday game, he walked three batters, usually an indication of getting a little bit tired. He's not known for completing games, so even if he does pitch well, we will probably see the Dodger bullpen at some point tonight. Which I think has been buoyed some by the presence of Forster. Terry has pitched well on the occasions he's been asked to do so. Two two pitch just low so that's what five times he's gone to three two on a New York batter. It's not something you want to do as a pitcher because you just have to move the ball in the middle of the plate a little bit more and when you do that you give up more hits. That's fouled away by Tommy. He was already pumping for second. Rick Monday fetching it out of the corner. Well, 
it's been three years since he's had the opportunity to win a, his own game. I guess you know, that was one of the big thrills of pitching. Well, he hit it pretty well to right center field. But Guerrero had him played perfectly. The wind carries it a little bit toward right. Pedro makes the catch. Two down. Now to the top of the order. And the second time around for the Yankees, Willie Randolph. Walked his first time, stole second. Therein lies part of the tale of the game so far. Yankees didn't get him to third, or Winfield could have produced him. Hitch is high and away, ball one. Ball is hit well to left. Baker going back. It's gone. Fastball behind in the count. Wanted to throw a strike. Really a good fastball hitter. Jumps on him. Line drive into the left field seats. Out of here at about 375. His second home run in the World Series. One hit, one run. Pitch to Mumphrey. Low ball one. Standing on the mound saying, why couldn't he just been a line drive for a base hit the left instead of going out of the ballpark? Fair ball on the chalk. Caron's off the wall. Monday pursues it, and Mumphrey holds it first with a single. Took a perfect bounce and roll for Monday. Oh, the Yankees rattle bird a little bit with two out. In the bottom of the third, Randolph's home run for a one nothing lead. Mumphrey's aboard, and here's Dave Winfield. When this big guy comes to the plate, You've got to think sooner or later the law of averages, or whatever it is, sooner or later. Baker loves to throw. Monkey back on his hands and knees at first base. Ball one. I'll be interested to see if they run Monkey. They ran Randolph in the first inning, indicating a change of strategy and aggressiveness they didn't have in Los Angeles. We may see it again here. Pitches inside. Mumphrey made no move. Two balls and no strikes. Joel Trevelli comes out of the third base coaching box, comes up the line. Winfield turns and has a good look. That's a pretty good pitch to run on. 2 0, oh, you, know you know they're not going to. Pitch out, or you would think not. Also, Luton's probably going to throw a strike here. Doesn't go, and he misses. Three balls and no strikes. Fifty pitches now by Bird Luton, and you get activity and in the Los Angeles bullpen. Action hits it in the bullpen. Terry Foster, as Pete suggested. Dave Stewart with it. There's the Dodger pin. Lefty is Foster, the right handed stick. Here's Reggie Jackson. And the prim primarily New York crowd is up stomping. 
Yankees lead 1 0. Randolph's home run with two out at 375 feet to left field. Jackson, his first time, struck out swinging. Checks on it. Ball one. And you can see Hooten wanting that pitch. Anytime you're pitching and you have two men on, two outs, trailing by a run, and you make a pretty good pitch on the outside corner with a guy like Reggie up there, you want every strike you throw, or at least you thought you'd throw. And both Jaeger and Hooten thought that was a pretty good knuckle curveball on the outside corner. First time up, they struck out Reggie with a high fastball, but he may not chase that pitch behind in the count. Out is one and one. With a Randolph at second. Uh, really Randolph hit the home run. And Mumphrey at second and Winfield at first. And Mumphrey edging down the line. Russell behind him, sort of peeking over his shoulder. Trying to read the pitch. And Reggie hits it in the air to the left side for Baker. Plenty of room for Dusty. And he makes the catch. So the Yankees get a run on Randolph's home run and lead after three, one to nothing. Yes, sir. I'd like to have this 35 millimeter film developed. Why, you're in the right place. Well, just a minute. Do you use Kodak paper? Sure. Look on the back of this photo. See? This paper manufactured by Kodak. We use Kodak paper because we believe in quality. Yes, but how can I be sure to get it every time? Well, just ask for it here, where you see the sign, the one with old, uh, what's his name on it? Old what's his name? <sighs> I was just kidding, Big Joe. <laughs> Here's two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Tonight's just to be right. Must be a full moon. Hardly any wind. And the low and brows cold. Sure beats the office. <laughs> when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, tonight, let it be low and brow. Sure hope the fish don't bother us. <laughs> Today, the landscape of investment opportunities spreads far and wide. But there is one place they grow in all varieties to suit every kind of investor. At Merrill Lynch, we brought together a profusion of financial services to nurture all kinds of investment needs. And it is the skill and care with which we tend them that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. John Lennon, Liverpool remembers the man who lives in the hearts of millions. Plus, the supreme Diana Ross. This lady never sings the blues. Thursday on 2020. It'll be Ron Say, Dusty Baker, and Pedro Guerrero for Los Angeles in the top of the fourth inning. New York leading as a result of Randolph's home run. The line score 1 2 1 by the Yankees, and New York is stranded three. For Los Angeles, 0 3 and 0, oh, and they have stranded three against Tommy John. So the Dodgers have grown accustomed to being behind and they are in their accustomed place. Yankee fans no longer count on anything when the Yankees move ahead, especially by only one run. Ron Say, who had a single, his first time up tonight, thereby completing his miracle. A frisbee sailing onto the field and uh, carry it off. It's always a relief when they only throw frisbees. Yes, sir. Indeed. Worth noting, I think, that Ron Say is wearing a cap with a flap. The other day, when he was struck by the Gossage pitch, he did not have a flap. But for a fraction of an inch. Tommy John ready. And the pitch is on the outside corner for strike. Say can reach in left here with his power, but he takes a dandy curveball 
For strike two. One and two. I flew back with Ron the other day on the plane coming back to New York. He was playing cards and seemed to feel fine. Swings and misses and strikes out on another sharp breaking sinker. Just go. And here you see the sinker kind of fades away. And Ron Say swings right through, way out in front. And there you saw Tommy John get ahead of him with a breaking ball. Missed with a sinker. May have been looking curveball. Came back with another one for strike three. Dusty Baker. Right center, base hit. Well, the Dusty has not had that pleasure very many times in the series. As he came to the plate, he was two for 19. He's now three for 20. The center fielder, Pedro Guerrero. Now the young man who tied the game with a one out home run after Baker had fanned against Ron Guidry in the seventh inning of the fifth game. And boy did he crunch it. Keith. <laughs> well, those folks sitting in the left center field pavilion must have had quite a thrill to have two shots come at him like that. Bang bang almost in the same place it looked like. Hit well to left. In Winfield. Right place. And you've got two up. Not the way that kid swings, Jim. Well, he's a good fastball hitter. The first time he threw him a bell high fastball away, line to right. Here you can see the ball's up in the strike zone. He gets his arms extended. And pitching can be sometimes a lot of luck. And that ball's hit right on the nose, right at Winfield. Rick Mundy now with two down and Dusty Baker at first. Seems that Tommy John is making some good pitches, but doesn't seem to be as sharp as he did last Wednesday night. At least to me. The results been the same. Maybe he'll settle down. Jerry Royce did. That was a heck of a game when Jerry pitched, wasn't it? He oh, got stronger and stronger brilliant. and stronger. Exactly oh. the point, Keith. Brilliant game. Folks got him in trouble early, and but that's what happens. If Jerry Royce has been 15 seasons. Playing professional baseball, Tommy John has been around for ages. Got a brand new becomes, arm, though, yes, Jimmy. Exactly. <laughs> gets more effective as he gets a little bit tired. There's a strike. Terry Monday. lady. Rick didn't play last Wednesday. They played Kenny Landrow. But Tommy got him for a big strikeout. So you see Tommy Lasorda going with a more veteran player. Rick hangs in there well against left-handers. You just have to make good pitches to get him out. What he's done now is work Tommy into a two-ball, one-strike count where might get a pretty good pitch to hit. Two-one. Fouls it away. I get 2 2. I think Tom Lasorda's had a pretty good series, too, don't you? As you see Dave Rigetti, who will pitch tomorrow night. Incidentally, that Valenzuela Rigetti matchup, if it comes, will be the first time ever in World Series history both starting pitchers were rookies. But to go back to the point on Lasorda, I think he's had a pretty good series. Tremendous. In game seven. <laughs> yeah. Don't try to get a hold of too many facts at once, I guess. First time ever when they've gone in there with all the marbles and chalk. If it comes to a seventh game, I think Dodger fans will see the real Rigetti. Well, he wasn't the pitcher that, that the Orioles saw on last Friday. Didn't throw as hard as he could. He only given up one home run all year. I'm not taking it away from Ron Say because he can hit home runs on anybody. Baker goes Monday, a shot through Watson's glove. Nailed it. Bobby flagged it. I would think that would be a base hit. And I'm not scoring it. No, we got three fellows scoring it, and it is a base hit. Baker goes to second, Monday at first, for Steve Yeager. So once again, Yeager in a big situation. Is he a man of destiny? 
did not hit Tommy John in game two. No, but he did hit that scorching liner up through the middle that Tommy knocked down and made a fine play or, or the game would have been tied one to one at the end of seven innings. Low. Hooten on deck. One would think here they would pitch rather carefully to Jaeger with the pitcher Hooten on deck and not be terribly concerned if they should walk Steve. There are your base runners. Yeah, I think the only thing they could be concerned with is that the tying run now is at second and the minute you walk them. As we said, Hooten swings the bat pretty well. You do put the, the go ahead and run it at second base, even though it is early in the game. They pitch to him. He hits it into left field for a base hit, and here comes Baker. The game is tied. So he does it again for Markham. Here you see the ball up in the strike zone. Hit right between Milbourne and Nettles. You see Milbourne making a nice effort. Baker running on the plate scores easily. They do strike back, don't they? They're pecking away, too. They've got six base hits, as you see, here in the top of the fourth inning. We're all even at one. And here's Bert Hooten. Strike. Frazier's now in the New York bullpen. Young man who pitched well, it's what I saw of it in the game in Los Angeles the other day. Wow. Strike two. Two out. That he did, Keith. He pitched well both Friday night and Saturday night. He yeah, had no. Astro Clay infield got exactly. him on Friday night, and the combination of, of maybe the wrong center fielder. Bobby Brown went in for defense, had trouble with a fly ball. As it turned out, he ended up losing both Friday and Saturday, even though he pitched well. Two strikes to Hooten, two on and two out, and it's outside. A 1 1 ball game. Dodgers win, it's over. Yankees must win to force game seven. Just misses. And there you see again Tommy John is not being able to get the ball down in the strike zone in this inning the ball that Monday hit even though it might have been played by a better fielder than Bob Watson was on the inside part of the plate where he normally doesn't throw it the ball to Jaeger for the single left was up in the strike zone. And there is a good sinker for strike three. So he strikes out Bert Hooten the Dodgers strand two more but they get a run on Jaeger's single and the game is even at one one. New Backwoods Smokes just hit town. Looking wild, but tasting mild. New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? New Backwoods Smokes. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? New Backwoods Smokes. All natural tobacco, hand rolled look in a keep em fresh pocket pouch. How can anything that looks so wild taste so mild? As an intelligent consumer, I wanted to compare Atari Asteroids with other companies' asteroids. But other companies don't make asteroids. I wanted to compare Atari Missile Command with other companies' Missile Command. But other companies don't make that either. Finally, I wanted to compare the new Atari Warlords. Unfortunately, other companies don't make it. When it comes to the video games the world wants most, nobody compares to Atari. Good service isn't giving people what they expect. No, it's giving them more than they expect. Avis knows that. So when you make a reservation, Avis makes a commitment, and they honor it. Uh, Morgan? Uh, see, even if you're six hours late, now you might be willing to pay a little more for this service, but at Avis, you don't have to. Trying harder is still the best way to do business. Bottom of the fourth inning we go now for New York's Bob Watson, Greg Nettles, and Rick Cerrone as the Dodgers get a run to tie in the top of this inning. And Bert Hooten. He had two men, Dave Stewart and Terry Forster, throwing back of him in the top. 
actually the bottom of the third and the, a portion of the top of the fourth, but they have both now sit down and put on their jackets in the bullpen. Frazier is back sitting down in the Yankee bullpen. Bird got Bob Watson to bounce the third baseman say his first time. Strike one. That may be the first time in the ball game Bert been out in front. To the shortstop Russell. One out. Well, it's another one of those games that's just beginning to simmer and simmer and bubble and bubble. So much at stake. Greg Nettles in the plate. Thing to watch here is whether or not he can keep his top hand on the bat. The sore hand. The left one. Foul back. And there you saw Sutton, excuse me, Hooten go right in on his fist. In yeah. last Wednesday's game, he moved the ball around, and, and this is when, of course, Greg's hand was healthy, ended up striking him out inside. I thought you could see that Nettles winced. Foul back out of play. Again, there you saw him take his hand off the bat. Face showed a little pain on the earliest one. Well, I was told that his hand is broken. He has a hairline fracture on the inside of his thumb, and, and you can see there that the hand not on the bat. And it doesn't seem to me that Nettles is going to be the home run threat that he normally is. Just cannot, to hit home runs, you have to have that top hand. That's hit down the line in right field to the corner. Nettles will take a turn. Monday with the ball. Nettles going for two. He'll stand. He doesn't choose to stand. He goes in on his thumb. He had plenty of time. What did you say, Jim? I said he's only he's, he's only going to hit doubles tonight, Howard. <laughs> well, what do I know? He hit nine home runs off in his lifetime. I ought to be an expert on it. Got the inside pitch, but again, you can see a bit of a teeth grinding experience. Ball did not carry him well off the wall for Monday. And though Greg chose to go in sliding, not knowing exactly where the ball was, he was in easily. And Hooten is in with a strike to Rick Saron. Yankees with the go-ahead run now out of second base with one out. Where'd you say it was, Rickson? Huh. Right over the outside corner. That's the way you saw it, Rickson. That's the way it was. Well, they got him out with knuckle curveballs the first time, and I, that's probably the best pitch to throw. And there you saw another one, and up in the strike zone. Excellent fastball hitter. Of course, everybody is second guessing him. Because on Sunday, with a couple of opportunities to get the Yankees way out in front, first ball pitch hitting. Yes, and not not being very selective. The book on on him is the fact that he is a first ball hitter, but he usually gets a pretty good pitch to hit, and that's part of being patient at the plate. Ended pitch, wicked pitch, strikes him out. Two down. And here you see the knuckle curveball. You'll see the ball drop. Shortstop. Goes down and in. Throne swings right through it. Excellent pitch. Larry Milbert. A phrase of second guessing. I mean, if, if it were not for what has we have come to call second guessing, wouldn't be any the sports wouldn't be any fun. Wouldn't be anything to talk about. Well, here you see they're going to intentionally walk Milbourne. Of course, Mil Milbourne drove in the winning run last Wednesday night on a knuckleball out over the plate. Knuckle curveball up and hit it, poked it down the left field line for eventually what turned out to be the winning run. John is scheduled. Frazier's throwing in the bullpen. TJ took off his uh, batting helmet. Lemon is asking Tommy John how he feels. Lemon is not disposed to take out one of his aces this early. He's also sensitive to earlier criticism that he's gone too long. With his pitch. And there you saw Tommy wave. I think he's through for the night. Yep. 
He talked with Clyde King. John does not look terribly pleased about it. No, he doesn't understand it. He doesn't agree with it. But you see, the manager's reaction to that which has transpired in the past. Now, if Lemon's going to put up a pinch hitter, it'll, it is Bobby Mercer. Somebody has finally checked out because Bobby Mercer has a marvelous career batting average against Bird Hooten. He's 13 for 34 at 382. Things get a little sticky when you've got an ornery owner and you've been criticized in the three prior games. So Lem is much more quickly reactive tonight. He, he now awaits a new second guess. But in point of fact, Jim Barmer has said that to him, John has not been in a good groove all evening, and he has given up six hits. Only one run, but six hits. And in his most recent inning, gave up three. But I think there is a tendency of veteran managers to stick with veteran pitchers. I know in, in our ball club in Baltimore, Earl Weaver would much rather stay with a veteran pitcher that's been there before than to go to a rookie such as George Frazier. But again, you can second guess anything. And if Bobby Merzer gets a clutch hit and Frazier pitches like he did in game three and four, it might be the best move that he can make. Nettles at second, Milburn at first, Mercer the hitter. This is Mercer. Oklahoma Bobby is up there. Both Hooten and Bobby spent time with the Cubs. Pitch, strike. Now Mercer is, to use Jim's word of a few moments ago, a selective hitter, a patient hitter. He waits for his pitch on average. Dodgers shade him well to the right in the outer defense. And the pitch is outside one and one. Well, I think that's a sign of somebody that's going to be successful as a pinch hitter on our ball club, Terry Crowley, Jose Morales. Terry has like 90 lifetime pinch hits. Jose, I think, 100. They go up there and look for a pitch that they think that they can hit. It's what you call self-confidence. Ball is hit well to right. Monday has room. Makes the catch. So Bobby Mercer hits a fly ball to right field with two out to end the inning. Yankees strand two more. That's a total of five. And you'll get a new pitcher for New York, George Frazier, coming on in relief of Tommy John. Lopes, Russell, and Garvey will face him. It's the season premiere of the greatest American hero. You guys ever had a dream? Baseball's got a new legend and a super fastball that could bring the World Series home. Then, in a special two-hour premiere. Who are you? Lee Majors is Hollywood's hottest stuntman. Sometimes I'm Robert Redford. Catch a new spirit of action and adventure, The Fall Guy, one week from tonight. Starting at 8, 7 Central and Mountain on ABC. George Frazier coming in, making his third appearance in the World Series. And we've already told you that he performed well in the two games out in Los Angeles. Tommy John, having pitched to the Dodgers through four innings of play, not particularly happy to be pulled for the pinch hitter, but it's done. In the meantime, as we wait for Frazier to warm up and the game to resume, let's go back to a conversation Howard had with Steve Yeager who begins more and more to become a prominent personality in this World Series. Here's Howard and Steve. Finally, Steve, what is there in your makeup that enables you to respond to postseason play? All the crises. Well, maybe it's trying to fulfill a childhood dream where everybody wants to get in the World Series and win the World Series, become world uh, champions in the game of baseball. Maybe it's that, Howard. I just uh, I can't explain it why I do so well. It, 
It's just I try hard and I try to be successful and I want to win. And that's the most important thing to me is to walk around with a World Series ring on my on my finger and walk around with the uh, with the things 20 or 30 years from now and say that 1981 we were the world champs. So George Frazier comes on. Pretty good sized fella at 6'5", 205, but he has had quite a year for himself. He was acquired on the St. Louis Cardinal chain in 81. He began the season with Springfield and the American Association moved over to Columbus when he was traded over to the Yankee organization from the Cardinals. And then he was called up by the Yankees at the start of the so-called second season taking Gene Nelson's place on the roster. And through the first 13 and a third innings he pitched with New York he didn't allow an earned run. And as a result he obviously was kept on the roster for the playoffs in the World Series and he's performed well. He has a very good fastball. And a hard sweeping sort of a curveball. And he'll pitch to the top of the order Davy Lopes, Bill Russell, and Steve Garvey, all right handed hitters. Tommy John in the four innings he worked through only 48 pitches. Low to Davy Lopes for ball one. He comes out of the bullpen throwing at better than 90 miles an hour. There's a strike. One and two. To the hole, Nettles can't get it, neither can Milburn, and Davy Lopes is aboard at first base. First man up against Frazier. That one had eyes. Stamps through there. Well, it's a one-two breaking ball, and what it does, and here you'll see it just get between Nettles and Melbourne. What it does, it allows Davy Lopes to have a chance to steal second on Tommy John. Even though he doesn't have a great pickoff move, he's looking right at the left-hander, and Davy doesn't only runs when he thinks he can make it. Against a right-handed 6-5 pitcher, it takes a little bit longer to get rid of the ball. A little bit better opportunity to try to steal. Nettle shortens up at third. Comes to the edge of the grass. See whether or not Russell chooses to bunt him over. He's directed to do so by Tom Lasorda. Lasorda, well aware that Frazier is not only a right-hander, but also a young pitcher. Russell pulls it away and takes a strike. Nettles coming in to talk to the young pitcher. Lopes coming off first. A 1 1 ball game. Dodgers up top of the fifth inning. Pitch out. Lopes is not going. Against Gossage. The count was 0-2. Davy got a base, stolen base. Against Russell, he went on 0-1. Against Davis, he went on at 0-1. He's got 1-1 one, one now. Russell bunts. And it stays fair. Watson picks it up, steps on the bag, and gets Russell, and Lopes is over at second. And they especially have to watch him on second base, one of the pivotal plays. The Saturday ball game was stealing third base, third base, in which, as we said then, is probably the third easiest base, base to steal. You don't have somebody Steve holding you on as closely. And here, Watson, you see him taking the out. The last thing the Yankees want right now is a big inning. If this runner, Davy Lopes, at second, would happen to score, they're still in the ball game. Plenty of time to get get the tying run and maybe go ahead, but just don't want a big inning in the fifth inning because it puts you right out of the game. Pretty tough customer up there now, and Steve Garvey. One out. Ball is hit high in the air to left field for Winfield. Two down. The third baseman. So Steve jumps on the first pitch. Bob Lemon. I wonder if he has any doubts within himself. He's only human as to whether or not he should have taken out Tommy John. 
But when you're second guessed from here to heaven and back, you begin to feel, I guess, deep within you, you've got to do something. Maybe, maybe even against your own impulse. But I think any manager watching Tommy John struggle through the first four innings, I mean, he's, he made the right move. He sent up a guy, like you said, Mercer, who has good track record against Houghton. It didn't turn out well, but I think it was well conceived. Over the mound. Bad bounce. Can't handle it. Lopes coming. 2 1 Dodgers. Here you see a good sinker. Just chops it up the middle. Hit right on the edge of the grass. And there you and saw the it kicked right. Yep. Hit right on where the grass and the dirt meet. And they just skip right between them. Seems uncanny, doesn't it? The way their ground balls are going. Part of this whole momentum they developed in Los Angeles. Two to one Dodgers as Dusty Baker takes a strike from Frazier. A base hit for Ron Say. It seems like most of the bad things that happened to the Yankees happened when George Frazier's on the mound. I'm sure he's talking to himself. Pitch is outside. It is one strange, one. isn't it? But he knows what his job is, and that is to keep them from scoring any other runs. That's a little looper. Randolph going hard. Can't get it. Drops for a base hit. Say turns and goes to third. They're just picking his bone. It's, yeah, it's agonizing. Must be for the Yankees. They haven't had a well hit ball this inning. Not really. It's a no man's land back a second base. Mumphrey had no chance to get it. Randolph was the only hope and it's just beyond his reach. So now with two out you have Ron Say over at third. You have Baker at first and Guerrero your hitter. Ron Davis is up in the Yankee pen. Rudy May up near the wall, the left-hander, and both of those gentlemen had to profit from the rainout, I would think. Guerrero hits it high, hits it deep to left center field. Mumphrey on his horse, going, can't get it. Say scores from third. Here comes Baker, rounding third. Guerrero heading for third. In with a triple of the Dodgers. They've got the big inning going. Well, you have to feel for Bob Lennon. You simply have to. He hit that ball to the fence at 430 feet. And the Dodgers lead four to one. And I wonder what Tommy John is thinking. Here after a series of good pitches. Throws that ball right down the middle. Guerrero as we said an excellent fastball hitter. Way out of Dodger Stadium. A triple here in Yankee Stadium. Four to one Los Angeles and now the power of Monday becomes a plus for Los Angeles. As he stands in against the right hander. Low for ball one. There's a strike. Lopes led the inning with a single. Russell sacrificed him to second. Garvey hit a fly ball to left for the second out. Then Say single. Baker single. Guerrero tripled. Three runs are in. One and two. Appeal at third. And they get the call from Terry Cooney. Silence in Yankee Stadium is like a tomb. New York won the first two here. The Dodgers went home. Won three in a row. Rained out last night. Now the Dodgers are sitting on a four to one lead. They have ten hits in the ballgame. Here in the 
Top of the fifth inning. Davis and May continue to throw in the New York bullpen. After Monday comes Jaeger. Good sharp breaking curveball snapping off inside. Monday strikes out. The inning is over, but it's a big one for Los Angeles. Four to one, Dodgers middle of the fifth. America's going diesel and Chevy's leading the way with more kinds of diesel cars and trucks than anyone by far. Like a dandy new five-speed diesel Chevette, just one of 49 diesel models made for the different things you do. We've got dirt road diesels. Delivery diesels. Dignitary diesels. Dr. Diesels. Daddy diesels. Dapper diesels too. Diesels, Chevy's got more than anyone by far. Chevy makes the things happen. Right guard knows a man needs all the protection he can get. That's why right guard solid has an action triggered formula. Triggered to release protection when your body needs it most. So the more you sweat, the more protection you get. Right guard action triggered formula helps keep you dry and odor free all day. Right guard anti first burn solid. The more you sweat, the more protection you get. Trust the leader in technology to forge a new legend, Seiko LaSalle. Trust Seiko to fuse slim elegance and peerless performance, new Seiko LaSalle. Trust Seiko to create timepieces destined for a place among the world's great possessions. Seiko LaSalle, miracles of slimness, marvels of technology. No wonder people trust Seiko more than any other watch. Seiko at your authorized dealer. Saturday, Sonny's long-lost kid rolls in. Just how far into the pregnancy is this girl? About eight years. She must be huge. Making a living. All right, Bert Hooten now with a three-run cushion as he pitches to New York in the bottom of the fifth inning. And he'll be pitching to the top of the order. Los Angeles has not won a world championship since 1965. Yankees turned them away twice since that time. This is the 11th time these two teams have met. New York having won eight of the previous ten. Randolph had a home run in the third for the first run of the ball game, so he's walked and homered. And has yet in this series to swing at the first pitch. He's walked eight times. There's the first one. George Frazier has a chance to become the first pitcher in World Series history to lose three games. Not an enviable thing. Meanwhile, look at Ron Say as a potential MVP. Coming back from the beaning, he's gotten two out of three. One and one. By the way, in 1919, when they played a nine-game series, Jim, a pitcher did lose three. It's harder in the seven-game series, it's obvious. Fouled away by Randolph. Make it one-two. Oh, Texas Burt's liable to get pretty tough now. Well, he knows his job is. The advantage is swung to the Dodger. He knows that he does not want the Yankees to get back in the game in this inning. Ball is hit high in the air to left field. Baker going back, going back, going back. Can't get it off the wall. Randolph is in at second base standing with a double. A walk, a home run, and a double for Willie. Randolph's power is even amazing the Yankee fans. Well, as I said, he goes one and two. He's ahead in the count. And there you see a high knuckle curveball. Randolph crushes it to left center. Baker can't get to it. That's a home run at Dodger Stadium because that's out there about 395 uh, on that fence. And very quickly, the Los Angeles bullpen is active. 
Jerry Mumphrey is at the plate. And again, in, as in the first inning when Randolph walked and stole second, Mumphrey, even though they're behind by three runs, it's important he gets the runner over. Even one run puts him back in the game. Little check, swing, line drive right to Ron Say. Welch and Howe. Bob Welch, a right hander, and Steve Howe, a left hander, are in the Dodger bullpen. Here's the check swing, little looper, right to Ronnie Say. That was almost a gimme, wasn't it? Here's Dave Winfield. Lined out to left and walked. His batting average. You gotta shake the bucket to find it. Low and away for ball one. Randolph double to lead the inning. Bob Lemon got a field snake there. Subject to the second guess now. Removing John and second guess on using Frazier. Davis is continuing to throw in the New York pen. Well, that was his choice, Keith, Ron Davis. How could he risk Davis? Who had had a very bad World Series. As we said earlier in the series, I think that's been the key. Davis is fed. Exactly. They, they used him twice, and he was ineffective both times. Failed twice to hold leads. And it changes, it changes your outlook on your bullpen. You can't go to him as early or in a crucial situation because you're not sure he can do the job. That's something they did not have to contend with during the regular season or in the the mini playoffs or the regular playoffs. Now Davis was outstanding. Winfield at 2 and 0 oh, takes a strike to make it 2 and 1. Good note that that was an uncle curveball. Who knows that he, he really has a, a difficult situation. He has Reggie Jackson on deck. He gets behind Winfield. Doesn't want to give him a great pitch to hit because it can mean an instant run. He ran off on second, but you don't want to walk him. And he made a clutch pitch. Came back with an uncle curveball, two and zero count, and threw it for a strike. If Winfield should get aboard, of course, Jackson comes up. He comes up representing the tying run in a four to one ball game. There's the Dodger fan, the pitchers we named for you, how the left hand, and Welsh, the right hand. Two one to Winfield. Out. Two two. The Dodgers got three in the top of this inning. Bert Hooten gives up a double to Randolph to lead the inning. Mumphrey a check swing pop out to the third baseman. Hooten trying to keep the Yankees at bay. If he can get out of this inning it becomes a big inning for him because he has stopped them. In the bottom half of the inning in which his team scored three. High pop up. Winfield falls down at the plate as Jaeger comes back and makes the catch. So Winfield fouls out to the catcher for the second out. And David getting some booze as he goes back to the dugout. Now Reggie with two out. Well, is he still Mr. October? One thing you know, he is still dangerous. Popped him up. Jaeger coming back for a look. It's on the screen. Out of play.
Up and into it. And who knows this is a big run because the Yankees get a run here. Every time you get a man on, the tying run comes to the plate. And it seems like when you're out on the mound pitching and you give up that extra run early in the ball game, even though you still have a two-run lead, it comes back to haunt you at some point. Pitch is inside. Second time that's happened to Reggie today. Again, not all that close, actually, because you see Yeager never left his crouch. Reach up and take it. But as Jim pointed out earlier, Reggie is stepping into it. That's inside. Two balls and one strike. Four one Dodgers, two out. Yankees at bat, bottom of the fifth. If you ever talk to Reggie why he is Mr. October, it's because of his aggressiveness, and you can see it right here. He may strike out, but he's not going to get cheated up there. If he gets the pitch a swing at, it's going to be a pretty hard swing. Three balls and one strike. He hit a fly ball to left field back in the third with two on. Bobby Watson, the batter on deck. Three one. Three two. Again, you see Hooten getting behind in the count. Has enough self confidence to throw a three one knuckle curveball. It was a ball, but Reggie chased it. Which I guess illustrates how difficult a pitch it is to hit. Especially when it's a grounder. You make a good point there. Randolph led the inning. He's still at second. Head with a double. Two out. Three two count on Jackson. Lopes throws him out. The inning is over. The Yankees have now stranded six. 4-1 Dodgers back with more action after this from our local station. When an orchid mates with an earthling. I'm a mother. Anything can happen and will. And you're going to be the prettiest, softest father a kid ever had. Mark and Mindy's baby tomorrow. Then Copper Creek finds a new marshal. And you thought you were the cutest. On Best of the West. Tomorrow. A bank that's looking forward is always looking for better ways to serve its customers. And here's one of those ways. When you open a Security Pacific Bank tax-free savings account, you'll get a high rate of interest on your savings. And it's tax-free. And you'll also get this nine-function calculator with memory. Free. It's something you can count on now. Only from Security Pacific Bank. High interest. Tax-free. Free calculator, too. Security Pacific Bank. The looking forward bank. As you can see, the same long-distance call to the same place at the same time doesn't cost the same. Fact is, it can be half as much on MCI, the nation's long-distance phone company. If your long-distance bills are more than $25 a month, make one more call to MCI and start cutting those bills down to size. You haven't been talking too much. You've just been paying too much. Jerry Dunphy here tonight on Eyewitness News. Join us, the World Series station, for a Dodger recap. Post-game interviews from Tony Hernandez in New York. An expert analysis of the game from former Dodger Wes Parker. X-Rated TV, tonight at 11. Ron Davis is the third New York pitcher now, and here's what's happened to him in the World Series. In game one, he walked both of the batters he faced. Went out in the eighth inning. Game four, retired the first three. Then he walked a man, gave a home run. There was an error behind him. Gave a single and left in the sixth inning. So he has not had a good World Series. In the third inning, Willie Randolph hit a home run to give New York the lead one to nothing. In the fourth inning, Baker singled. Monday delivered a two-out single. Yeager singled to bring Baker home. 
In the fifth inning, Lopes with a single. Russell sacrificed him to second. Ron Say a single and a run batted in. Then came Baker's single. Guerrero followed with a triple at four. Four to one Dodgers as they come to the plate in the top of the sixth inning with Steve Yeager, Bert Hooten, and Davey Lopes. Steve Yeager promptly tied up the game after the Yankees had assumed a one nothing lead in the bottom of the third. Jumps on the first pitch and fouls it in the crowd. Yankees have had a number of opportunities. Twice they've had men on second base with nobody out. In each case, they failed even to ever advance the runner. Winfield and Jackson have each failed twice with a runner in scoring position. One ball and one strike as he's inside. New York came to the World Series with nine pitchers. Los Angeles came to the World Series with 11 pitchers. That's because of the designated hitter. Team is of a pattern with the three prior Dodger victories. Once falling behind, they quickly recapture, go ahead, and their pitching is held up. Foul ball. And in each and every game of the last four, manager Bob Lemon involved in controversial judgments. Davis gets Yeager of a 90 mile an hour fastball. Bob talking to Charlie Lau, the Yankee batting coach. Bert All right, here's Bert. Inside ball one. Lopes to the on deck circle for Los Angeles. Ball two. Drysdale's on that pitching staff. Remember when Big D was used as a pinch hitter by Walter Olson? The winder could hit. Gotcha. Dodgers had a history of good hitting pitches. Big Nuke could hit. Herb Palika could hit. Jacket will come out for Bert Hooten as he goes to first base on the walk. This is exactly what it has exactly been Ron Davis's pattern. Struck out Yeager apparently with ease. Then walks the opposition pitcher. Well, that's what happened on the Saturday ball game. Six to three lead. Helped the Dodgers get back in into the game with a one out walk Second and through the home run to Johnstone. Trouble the same way in the Milwaukee side. Which is why Lemon went to Frazier. He no longer trusted Davis. Top of the order for Lopes. Russell to the on deck circle with one out. And the pitcher Hooten on first. Which is high. You really think about it, there's so many less situations in the American League because of the DH rule where you can get the second guessing manager in the American League. Mercer would have been batting in that position possibly, or a DH would have been. Tommy John would have been allowed to remain in the ball game, and you would have had a veteran pitcher, and also had the chance of having a veteran hitter hit off who. What you're saying, net net, is the designated hitter rule makes it a lot more interesting. Well, it. Although there are those who say the opposite, talking sure. about strategy. Well, I know Al Michaels is sitting out there in Menlo Park saying, see, there Chuck, again. Chuck. Yes, there again, strategy dictated that Lemon made a move, and as it turned out, it's been the wrong one. Foul ball down the left side. Sharply struck. 
They're chuckling out that way because of the job Bill Walsh is doing with the 49ers. Next Rams and Chargers. Another reason that Ron Davis has struggled, we've seen him be really wild, but also he, as we said, he throws hardly any breaking balls at all. And the Dodgers are known to be fastball hitters. And when you get behind them 2 and 0 and throw a fastball in the middle of the plate, they're going to have good swings. And when this happens, it just enhances the chances of them getting base hits. And there you saw Davey Lopes 2 and 0, fastball in the middle of the plate. He was even out in front of it, but hit it right on the nose, but just a little bit foul. And now interrupted Davis's rhythm. Backing out for a moment. Back in. He checked on it. Three balls and one strike. Rudy May, the left-hander, and Rick Russell, the right-hander, in the New York bullpen. May is the second time up for Rudy. Lopes making Davis wait. Really building a grave. Digging a grave, I guess I should have said. Putin to second, Lopes to first. With one out, Russell up. Lemon to the mound. He might do it for Davis. Well, he did have Rick Russell available for the entire ball game. It's been really this would be his fourth day since he pitched on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And what yeah. did he pitch? Pardon me. What did he? How many innings did he pitch? Pitched three, didn't he? Yes. I mean, this would be a regular term on a four four day rotation. And again, he went with a rookie. Of course, he didn't pitch again in the third consecutive game. Frazier didn't pitch as badly as the hits and runs indicated. All right, Davis stays. And the pitch to Russell is in there for a strike. Inside, one and one. Putin at second. Lopes at first. One out. He struck out Yeager. And he walked successive hitters. One and two for Russell. Really a contact hitter trying to punch it to the right side. Didn't get it. Holds it. In the hole. Base hit left field. Putin's coming. Winfield up the throw. Won't get there. Five one Dodgers. Everything is today. coming apart. A very poor throw by Winfield. Ron Davis failing again. And an owner who is taking careful note. Notes for next year. Watch the, watch the throw though. Now he just start. Must have bounced six times. Watch how low it is. See? It actually hit the dirt right about the inside of the shortstop position. Back to the mound goes Bob Lemon. That'll do it for Ron Davis. We've got a timeout. The Dodgers scoring another run. Leading in the top of the six by a score of five to one. Hey, bet you could use a microwave oven. Sure, but where would I put it? If I move this, then I gotta move this. And this goes there. Presenting the microwave oven you don't have to make space for. The Space Maker microwave oven from GE. And this goes there. Space Maker fits right over your range. And it even has an exhaust fan and work light. You don't have to make space for a Space Maker. GE, we bring good things to life. Come on now. Are you going to spend this weekend hibernating again? But it's cold out there. That's no reason to let your fine, firm body go soft. We're AMF. We make what it takes to keep you in shape 
indoors. Voight racquetball, Whiteley Bruce Jenner exercise equipment, and AMF bowling equipment. Remember, you won't get a cup. For hibernating, all you'll get is a pot. Gully. Well, imagine your surprise when you realize, well, some difference. Reese's peanut butter flavors inside. Reese's Pieces. Inside this candy shell is Reese's peanut butter flavor. Reese's Pieces. Well, imagine your surprise when you realize, well, Reese's peanut butter flavors inside. Reese's Pieces. Wow, some difference. On Halloween, watch out for a very spirited NCAA college football doubleheader. First All-American quarterback Arch Schleister and conference co-leading Ohio State battle the Boilermakers of Purdue in a Big Ten column, plus other regional confrontations, then haunting national action as undefeated Penn State, the number one team in the nation, attacks Miami, a bewitching brew. Saturday on ABC. <laughs> Thirty-two-year-old Rick Russell, who came over to the Yankees in the trade from Chicago Cubs for Doug Bird. And Mike Griffin eventually went over to the Cubs. And he was traded to New York just on the eve of the strike. You saw his numbers a moment ago. He is the fourth New York pitcher. John started. When he was lifted, the score was 1-1. Frazier relieved. He gave up three runs. Davis now is charged with one. And Davy Lopes out at second base. And Bill Russell at first base are also the, first base the property of Ron Davis. Thomas has now come out to the on deck circle and apparently is going to hit for Ron Say as Steve Garvey comes to the plate for the Dodgers. You have one out. Jaeger struck out to lead the inning. Then Davis walked Hooten. He walked Lopes and Russell singled. And there is Daryl Thomas, and it's a very wise move on Lasorda's part to take Ron out of the game. It was amazing that he started the game. That involved both courage and great physical resiliency, and Say came through with a pair of hits. Pitch is low and away to Garvey for ball one. Steve had a pair of singles and two at bats against Ron. <laughs> George is right, and that sign symbolizes exactly what the situation is in this stadium in the owner's box right now. Runners go. Pitch swung on. No throw. Double steal. Another double steal. This Yankee performance tonight has become an embarrassment to the owner who wants everything for the fans of the Yankees. Well you can't just deliver everything and it may be that this World Series is proving just that. One has to feel sympathy for Bob Lemon, who's a beautiful man, who's weathered the vicissitudes of life and great personal tragedy very well. But Steinbrenner has to think about this whole team as the intentional walk is now effectuated. He told me Sunday on Sportsbeat that win or lose the series, he would make changes. Now he may make sweeping changes. Look at that. Other than Goose Gossage, the relievers have failed totally. So the expected strength wasn't there. And there is age at first base with Watson. And the backup, again, as you look at Lynn, Al Revering is not your whirlwind ball player. Sarone Young, a solid catch when healthy. Injuries happen to me. Randolph, there's Lasorda. A solid player, and he's proved himself all over again in the World Series. Shortstop fine with Denton Milburn. Third, Nettles. Getting older, but still effective. At the same time, when you consider the Dodgers, uh, time is beginning to whittle away at some exactly of the Exactly so. People. This could be the last hurrah for the Dodger team as we see it here in now. As for Winfield, he's had a simply terrible series, but he's a great athlete, and that's a bad series. And that's it. Mumphrey is a solid and young player. Reggie's future, 
backhandedly uncertain. So there's a lot that's going to happen with this Yankee team. The bases are loaded behind Russell now with only one out and Daryl Thomas steps in from the left side and bunts it foul. Had a little safety squeeze going. Hopes was about three strides, four strides off the bag at third. For Lasorda, one must say he has managed a superb series. Always on top of things, always forcing things as the most recent double steal evidence. Well, exactly, and the Dodgers have done that, but I think right now, I, if I'm managing, I bring in Rudy May mainly because I want, can't afford to give up another run. Mm. Thomas is very difficult to double up from the left side. Yep. If he bats right-handed and Rudy makes a good pitch, you, you set up, you set up the double play. We saw that with Larry Milborn from the right side. He's a double play man. On the left side, he beats the double play by a step. So I think the prophetic thing that was said in the interview with Reggie Jackson today: when you get down three games, two in a series, sometimes a bad hop can turn the game completely around, and we've seen that tonight. The ball that say hit up the middle. Yep. Hit the edge of the grass and right through two. And that makes a difference. Nettle spears it, steps on the bag, whirls and loops the throw across, safe at first base. Another run scores. Six to one, Dodger. I'll tell you, though, that's just what Jim Palm was talking about. Get him batting from the right side. Yep. But that was truly a remarkable effort by Nettle. It really was. Look well, at it again, Jim. He made as good a play as you can make. He barely gets to it. There you can see him step on the, the base. But look at the throw. While we won't see it again, he couldn't get a lot on it, but he still got it there and barely failed to get so swift a runner as Thomas. Now it is Dusty Baker with Garvey up at second and Thomas on first. Russell being forced by Nettles at third. But I think. Another look at it, Jim. And here you see Greg going to his right makes a nice play. Really a desperation throw. He's known for having a, one of the most accurate arms, if not the most accurate arm in the American League, and the throw is right on the money. So Thomas beat the play. Baker to Nettles off his chest. No play, I don't think. Nope. Bases are loaded again with two out for Los Angeles. 6 1 Dodgers lead. They scored one in the fourth, three in the fifth, two here in the sixth. Another look at it at third. The ball comes skittering up, hits him right in the chest. And it's an error in the, on Nettles. In the last analysis, too, Keith, analyzing it out, Dodger pitching has proved to be stronger than Yankee pitching. That's a foul ball. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, sir. Would indeed. Mr. Pitcher, wouldn't you? Most definitely. Saw Royce come along and struggle early. Pitched a mass ball game. As Garvey at third. Thomas at second. Baker at first. Two runs are in. Two out. Guerrero, who had a two run triple in the fifth inning, is at the plate. But I think what we said after game two before game three in Los Angeles is that the Dodgers were not as bad a team as we saw play in the first two games. And I doubt if the Yankees are as bad a team as we've seen play really in the last four ball games. Well it's been an uneven series. The Yankees won the first two games relatively handily. The next three games were scrambles. Two of them wild. A third one, a brilliant pitching contest. And this game appears at this moment to be an embarrassment to the Yankee tradition. Ball is lifted out into left center field. Mumphrey can't get it. Garvey scores. Here comes Thomas to the plate. The throw to third, not in time. Double Guerrero. Two runs are in. And it's becoming a blowout. Eight to one, Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. 
here you see the pitch up in the strike zone. Guerrero doesn't hit it that well. Mumphrey a little bit hesitant. Plays it on one hop. Couldn't get it. The ball dropping in front of him. He makes another transgression there. He missed the cutoff man, and Guerrero was allowed to go to second. A lot of mistakes in this inning. Monday being walked intentionally. Baker at third, Guerrero at second. Two down. And four runs in for the Dodgers. Four. And some of the folks People are... People beginning oh. to leave Yankee Stadium. Who can remember that around these parts? Now Steve Yeager. As the Dodgers have batted around here in the sixth. He fouls it away. He struck out against Davis to lead this inning. I think it's interesting right here that Jaeger is batting. I think this is probably a tribute to how well he's played. Normally we would see Mike Sosha, who's played against right hand pitching all year long. Well, who would you vote for if you had a vote right now? MVP in the series. Maybe Tom Lasorda. Well, he's done a great job. As a roller to the shortstop, Milbert. Throw is in time to get Jaeger. And the Dodgers are finally retired. But they have a big inning. One in the fourth, three in the fifth, four more in the sixth. The Los Angeles leads it eight to one. You deserve a break today. Hey, what's this all about? It's the You Deserve a Break Today game. Hey, top prize, $300,000 cash money, over 45 million, million prizes. What? That's half a million possible winners every day. Oh, catch these instant prizes. Big Mac fries. Up to 100,000 bucks. 30,000 possible winners every hour. Trips to Rio. The, the Bahamas. Bahamas. 500 possible winners every minute. Nine possible winners every second. <laughs> Come in and play today. in a lifetime play but I've got an instant replay forever on my RCA convertible video recorder it's really two VCRs in one it records my TV favorites and it converts to a portable home movie outfit so I can record Moose's big place too the RCA convertible two VCRs are better than one no one gives you more VCR than RCA in just a jiffy, I can help make your GM car run cleaner, run longer, and save gasoline. How, Mr. Goodrich? Well, maybe it's time for a new set of genuine GM filters to clean the oil, to clean the gasoline, to clean the 10,000 gallons of air your engine mixes with every gallon of gas. Tall order! And there's still time to check your wipers. Keep that great GM feeling. That was fast, Mr. Goodrich, with genuine GM parts. Daryl Thomas goes in at third base. Ron Say out of the game after certainly accomplishing something of a miracle. Dusty Baker is now in left field where he has been for the night. But the changes are that Guerrero moves over to right while this man, Landro, goes in to play center. Kenny Landro, who played center field most of the two seasons for Los Angeles. And he, of course, was with the Minnesota Twins and put in quite a bit of service in center field here in this ballpark so he knows it quite well well there will be a lot of punching and jabbing unless there is a terribly dramatic turnaround in this ball game coming up on Saturday college football we have regionals for you at the top of the day Starting at 12 Eastern Time, Ohio State, Purdue, big win in the Big Ten, North Carolina State, South Carolina, Gamecocks resurgent. Houston had a victory over Arkansas last week. Dartmouth, Yale, a big win in the Ivy. Drake is undefeated in, against Tulsa. And then the big win, Penn State, ranked number one at Miami. Bob Watson, Greg Nettles, and Rick Cerrone for New York. 
The Dodgers have given Burt Putin an eight to one lead. Yankees up in the bottom of the sixth inning. He goes to one and one on Bobby. The Dodgers trying to win their first world championship since 1965. And their third against the Yankees. One and two. From here on to the finish of this ball game, if Hooten gets in trouble, it will be staff warming up. The only man that might not be told to, to crank up would be Fernando. The count 2 2 to Watson. On the ground to Russell at shortstop. Hills throw in time. One out. The third baseman, Ray Nettles. Nettles pulled his double into the right field corner. I think the most important thing for Bert Hooten is he doesn't get away from his game plan. Just because the score is eight to one doesn't mean you're just going to throw fastballs and not go with what is your best pitch. And on Watson, he got ahead in the count, ended up getting him to hit a knuckle curveball to shortstop. So a lot of times you have a tendency to challenge the hitters more than you should. And he pops Nettles up on the left side. Looks like it'll drift out of play. Does. The aisles are filled as people leave. At least the one on the right side. One one to Nettles. The right center base hit. Greg has two hits, sore hand and all. Yankee dugout looks like it's shocked, doesn't it? Stunned. The proud men wearing a proud uniform with a proud tradition. And all that pride has been knocked out tonight. Looks like that'll. It may be it for Greg because the hand is obviously bothering him. Trainer, Gene Monahan's gone out. He'll leave the game. Well, if indeed he has a hairline fracture, Jim, it was remarkable that he got the two hits he did. Well, you're not as great a player as Greg Nettles is without having a lot of cuts, and he sure certainly showed it tonight. You could see him in batting practice before the game, as you said. Had tremendous trouble hitting any ball on the inside part of the plate. But he knew that the Yankees had a win tonight. And certainly did his best. It's defined as a small, incomplete fracture of the right thumb. Rodriguez goes in to run for him and will play third base. Running. The batter is Rick Cerrone. And the pitch misses. First ball one. Yankees at bat at the bottom of the sixth, and the Dodgers leading eight to one. Bert has a long look at Dick Stello on that call, but it's all two. The Yankees won the first two here. The Dodgers won three in a row in Los Angeles, and they're trying to slam the door on the Yankees here tonight. Two and one. Two and two.
Dodger bullpen is active again. If the Dodgers win this game, as appears certain, it'll be only the second time in history a team has lost the first two and come back to win four in a row. The Yankees did it against these Dodgers in 78. How's the left-hander? And Welch the right-hander. Welch didn't get anybody out in the start that he made. He is a hard throwing right hander. Three and two now to Saron. Rodriguez on first. Foul. Something is going to happen, have to happen very big. And I mean big to wake up the Yankees, shocked by the Dodger outburst at the top of the inning. Wooten walks around. The shortstop, Larry Bert Hooten has now thrown. 100 pitches. You have one out and two on in the bottom of the sixth inning. Well, there you see Rick Cerrone. He's yelling at Bert Hooten because he threw so many breaking balls. I, I guess he feels that Bert should be throwing him fastballs. Bert learned his lesson. He threw fastballs to Greg Nettles and he singled into center field. Of course, the last thing I think Hooten wanted to do was walk Cerrone. Of course, doing the, the Oakland playoff series, the first game that Mike Norris pitched for Oakland against Kansas City, he shut them out. I guess they threw a lot of screwballs. They felt he should all throw high fastballs so they could win. But uh, Bert is doing what he thinks is, is best, which is to mix up his pitches. And apparently, Cerrone thought he should challenge him with fastballs. Milburn looks at low for a ball. Rick Russell is in the on deck circle, but with only one out. And Hooten struggling right now with his control. Rudy May is back in the New York bullpen, cranking up in a hurry. Outside, ball two. Here comes Tom Lasorda out of the dugout. That's what, 102 pitches now for Happy. So they'll talk, and we'll see if Lasorda wants to make the move now. Or if he'll give Welch and Howe a little more time. Rick Russell is in the Yankee on deck circle. Bob Lemon refusing to tip his hand as to which man he might call on. Obviously, he wants Lasorda to make the move. Tom is not at this point ready to make it. Well, again, that's very good strategy. He comes out with two balls if Putin would happen to lose this hitter. Then Bob Lemon has to make a move with his pinch hitter, and he can either come with a right hander or the left hander. He waits till the. This Milborn is either walked or gets a base hit, then Lemon has the, the upper hand in strategy. Ball three, three balls, and no strikes to Milborn. You've got one out. You've got Rodriguez at second, Cerrone at first. Eight to one, Dodgers. Putin struggling now. Three and one. Walked in, the bases are loaded. Gamble comes out, picks up the sledgehammer. If Tommy's if doing his job, he would wait till Oscar's announced. He is announced. So Gamble is official, and Tom Lasorda will make a pitching change. 8 1, timeout on the field. Happy birthday! Oh my goodness! Make way here! Hot cake, hot cake! Hey everybody! Here comes your present. There you are. Happy birthday. Big spender. 
Bell used to be Bell. Good looking pig. I've seen better. With a one step, you can see your pictures before the candles go out. Cake looks great. Yeah, but don't cut it. Why? It's rented. Rented? Well, rent yourself another pig and give me my picture. Polaroid means fun. With a one step. Holiday Inn. Welcome to our people pleasing. Hi. Is that the Holiday Inn East, the Holiday Inn West, the Midtown? The one by United Industries. The one by the headquarters or the plant? The headquarters. We offer you a choice of the most popular locations. You need three hands. You're right. People please in locations. The airport? The one by Holiday Inn North or Holiday Inn South? Is number one in people pleasing. Whoever wants to know the heart and mind of America had better learn baseball. Baseball fever. Catch it. It's worth it. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Wednesday's the night. ABC is the place. Fire it in. It's the season premiere of the greatest American hero. You guys ever had a dream? Baseball's got a new legend and a super fastball that could bring the World Series home. Then, in a special two-hour premiere. Who are you? Lee Majors is Hollywood's hottest stuntman. Sometimes I'm Robert Redford. Catch a new spirit of action and adventure, The Fall Guy, one week from tonight. Starting at 8, 7 Central and Bounded on ABC. Young Steve Howe has come on in relief of Bert Hooten. And a note on Howe. He has faced 15 batters in the series. Only twice has he had to throw more than four pitches to a batter. Oscar Gamble was announced as the Yankee hitter. Now it is Lou Pinella who will come out hitting right handed, who has had a remarkable series as a hitter. What's really come into focus in the perspective of this series has been the failure of the Yankee long relief. And this final game. Is again the best evidence. Looking at the base runners, and they are Rodriguez, Saron, and Milburn. You have one out, and Fidella in. Then whom do you want to lose with? Rick Russell? George Frazier? Or Tommy John, Jim? Oh, I, if I'm going to lose a ball game, I have to go with Tommy John, and I think most managers would have done that. As we said earlier, Bob Lemon gambled, and it hasn't paid off. As most of the moves he's made, he's just had a, a tough series in that respect. How to Panella? Fouled off, strike one. 8 1 Dodgers. All for the big mountain for the Yankees. Manella turned and yelled something into the Dodger dugout. High fly ball lifted foul out of play to the right. See, he has, as I said, had a most productive postseason. Forster and Welch in the Dodger bullpen now. Two strikes on Lou Pinella. Punch foul. House throwing him strikes and he's fouling them off.
Base hit figures to deliver two for New York. Up the middle, base hit. Rodriguez scores. Saron will come. No, nope, he does not come. Took the big turn, and Joe Altabelli, the third base coach, flagged him down. Bases are still loaded. Here you see a fastball in the middle of the plate. Pinnell, as he's done all series, goes with the pitch and just wraps it up the middle. Completely professional bats. Not too good a base running, Howard. There is no way that Kenny Landro is coming up and throwing that ball to home home plate. Because if you do that and you make a bad throw, right. you allow two other runners to get into scoring position. Don't understand. Stopping the man at third. Nope. And I can understand some sense of I guess restraint, but yeah, that's what happens when you're really down, you begin to play tentatively, afraid to make one single mistake in any direction. Willie Randolph, big night for Willie, a double and a home run and a walk. Two balls and no strikes for Randolph. Now the Yankee home folks take a little heart. Bases are loaded, and Ron Karanowski, the Dodger pitching coach, on the way to the mound to talk to young Steve Howe. But the one, I think, important thing that Tommy Lasorda has done there you see Terry Forrester, the left-hander, and Bob Welch, the right-hander, has gotten Oscar Gamble out of the game. And they've also used Bobby Mercer. They don't have the left-handed power that they would normally have on their bench. They still have one out, a run in. Base is loaded. Hit the right. Guerrero flags it down. Runner tags to third and does not come. Good throw by Guerrero. That's two out. I think Lou was upset because the man didn't come from third. That's what Lou Pinella, you might have observed, just said. Worst base running I've ever seen. Mumphrey hitting from the right side takes ball one. Well, if there ever was a statistic kept for the worst base running in four consecutive games, I think the Yankees would qualify. They just have not played the way they play most of the season. I know playing against them, they wouldn't have finished first the first half if they played like this inside corner for a strike Tentative. very tentative. when you're being blown out you've got to be aggressive fouled away Cynthia now. A one two pitch to Mumphrey. Loop to right. Guerrero makes the catch. The Yankees leave the bases full. And so after six innings in game number six. 8-2 Dodgers. Back with more after this from our local station. Tomorrow, the season premiere of Barney Miller. Is it true that Sergeant Wojo Howitz is going to be a father? And Wojo gets hit with a paternity suit. I'm sterile. You're so big. Then Jim becomes a network program executive. When do you finally stand up and assert yourself? August! Taxi! No bank or savings and loan can pay you more interest or save you more taxes on a new one-year tax saver certificate than Wells Fargo. 
and none offers you the financial counsel of your own Wells Fargo personal banker. Maximum tax benefit, maximum interest. A personal banker to help you make the most of both. Only Wells Fargo delivers it all. Now, a nice cup of coffee, please. Down from the hills, cha-cha-cha, with the very freshest coffee beans, cha-cha-cha, cha-cha-cha, coffee beans, cha-cha-cha, coffee beans, cha-cha-cha, coffee beans. Cha -cha -cha. <laughs> Spectacular! Western Airlines, the only way to fly. Charlie Dauncey here tonight on Eyewitness News, play-by-play -play analysis of tonight's World Series game by former Dodger great Wes Parker. Southland fans join in on the excitement. Tony Hernandez will have a satellite report from New York. X-Rated TV, tonight at 11. Lou Piniella, having delivered the pinch hit single, the ball is lined to right by Willie Randolph. Piniella. Turns and sees the base runner at third, has not made the move to home plate, and reflects total exasperation. Rudy May now comes on to pitch for New York, and he is the fifth pitcher in the ball game. Well, the purists of baseball going to be hard put to find art in this. You want the truth. Steve Howe will bet. Having come in from the bullpen and did his job. Dodgers lead it 8 to 2 and bat here in the top of the seventh inning. Rudy May, strike on the corner. Fouled away, and it's two strikes on the Dodger pitcher, Steve Howe. Then it'll be the top of the order, Lopes and Russell. Lope, one and two. Steve's gone. Strike out for May. One out and Lopes will come. The Dodgers in the five game series against Houston. Down 0 and 2. To win three in a row at home. The Back to the wall. Davey Monday Lopes. hits a home run on a cold day in Montreal over the center field fence in the league championship series. Hooten the MVP in the league championship series. They come to New York. They lose two. Now they are on the verge of winning their first world championship since 1965. Lopes takes it high. The Goodyear Blimp America providing the visuals from the sky tonight out of Houston, Texas, with our cameraman Charlie Mitchell and the pilot captain Larry Chambers. Good looking fella from Spring, Texas. May at 2 0 oh to Lopes comes inside to make it three balls and no strikes. The middle relievers, as Howard said, may well have been New York's Achilles heel. Ball four. Certainly a soft underbelly. The shortstop. Bill it's going to be very hard to pick the MVP in this series. Always presuming the Dodgers win it, which seems so apparent now, especially after the Yankee debacle in the last game. That base running. Guerrero's got to be considered with seven RBIs. Say he's got to be considered with six RBIs. 
Came back from a beating. Jaeger's got to be considered. And on the basis of overall consistency, Garvey's got to be considered. Russell looks at low. Well, I'll tell you one thing. There will be some dancing in Los Angeles. The Dodgers do in this. They are certainly sitting on a... They've got their foot in the door. And the cork about to pop in the clubhouse. May play and catch with Watson with Lopes on first base. One out. Garvey on deck. And a one ball count on Bill Russell. Two balls. Marlo Thomas. Must be a Dodger fan. Hey, Howard. I'm not be sure of that. How do you know? Because I know she is. So is Danny. Or Daddy. They just high and tight to make it three balls and no strikes. It has become a laborious evening <laughs> for the Yankees. There's a strike. More activity in the New York bullpen. Runner goes. Ball hit to Milburn. Lopes in at second base. On the hit and run, they throw out Russell at first. Two out. Davy at the turn for Steve Garvey. Well, I think any pitcher will tell you, you come in in long relief and you're behind eight to two, it's hard to concentrate. We saw Bert Hooten go out there in the sixth inning with a eight to one lead, had his control problems, a little bit difficulty in concentrating. Not an easy game to pitch in when your team's way ahead or way behind. High in the air to center. Humphrey. Yeah. Inning is over. In the middle of the seventh, Los Angeles eight, New York two. Why is our citation X11 such a hero with performance minded Americans? Let's ask single person. Citation X11, super car. The handling is impressive, yet I've got 40 cubic feet of space here. For all my toys. More amazing, it carries five adults comfortably. Then your Citation X11 will fit right in when you're married and have kids. I'm going to pretend you never said that. Now get bigger savings on new 1981 Citations. United announces great low prices on complete Hawaii vacation packages. Prices that bring Hawaii closer from the East Coast. Closer from the Midwest. Closer from every city United serves. United, once in a lifetime prices for a once in a lifetime vacation. Hi, I'm Cindy. I'm the perfect female type, 18 to 25. You don't know what's going on. This is more than commercials. They're killing all the girls that are perfect. What have you got me mixed up in? If looks could kill, Looker, rated PG, starts Friday. Check newspaper for a theater near you. All Saber certificates are one month old. How successful is the program? Plus, how the president won Senate approval of the AWAC sale. Tomorrow, watch ABC's World News Tonight. There is a good deal of the story right there in this World Series.
Now it'll be Dave Winfield, Reggie Jackson, and Bob Watson for New York, trailing by six and hitting in the bottom of the seventh against Steve Howe. And it's ball one to Winfield. ABC News Nightline. I'm sure, most of you have heard that the Senate vote swung today in the president's favor. The senators approved the sale of AWACS reconnaissance planes to Saudi Arabia. That's the topic tonight on Nightline with Ted Koppel. High bouncer to short. One out. Now you hear the boo birds, and certainly Winfield feels terribly. But in perfect truth, this Yankee team, well, Willie Randolph's trying to clap it up a little bit, but they have been flat, listless. They look like a team all day that came all the evening that came to be beaten, Jim. Well, to say pitching's anywhere from 75 and 90 percent of the game, and tonight. They made a really what turned out to be a monumental decision. Pinch hit for Tommy John. George Frazier came in, did not again for the third time this year. He pitched that poorly, but circumstances allowed the Dodgers to put three runs on the board. He came back with a four run inning. Anytime your pitching staff gives up eight runs, it's tough to look good as a team. That's for sure. How has Jackson at one and two? Yeah. Him out. Now Jackson gets it from the fans. Might be, might be the last time you'll see Reggie in a Yankee First uniform. Base. Could be. Not the kind of aftermath you'd expect to the exciting three consecutive games in Los Angeles. Bob Watson fouls it away. Well, I'll tell you, you get into a street fight with these Dodgers with the speed they have and the power they have. And if you don't have good pitching, Houston has good pitching. Houston couldn't beat them. They couldn't put them down. Interesting you mentioned Houston. Before the game, let's watch this. To Russell at shortstop. Handles it well. And throws out Watson. So Steve Howe gets New York in order in the bottom of the seventh. And after seven, eight, two, Dodgers. Control six to base. Looks like this uh, big old hole on the ground is going to be safe for the night over. And they come out all beat. It's Miller time. Miller time. Time to appreciate the difference between a good beer when it's time to relax and a great beer. One beer stands clear. Miller Highlight. You got the time. We got the beer. Miller beer. Come Miller time. We got the beer. People trust Seiko technology for bold sports watches that perform brilliantly, even 100 meters beneath the sea. People trust Seiko for slim dress watches with every timekeeping function you'll probably ever need. People trust Seiko for watches that are as finely crafted as they are technologically advanced. In fact, people trust Seiko more than any other watch. At your authorized dealer. How's it cold tonight? Oh, don't ask. I got you some cough medicine. <laughs> but I'm also sniffling, sneezing, aching. My head is stuffy. I'm feverish, and I gotta rest. I was supposed to get a sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you could rest medicine? That's NyQuil. It relieves a cough as well as this, plus all my other symptoms. NyQuil. Would you get me some? Be right back. NyQuil. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can rest medicine. 
On Halloween, a spirited college football doubleheader as Ohio State battles Purdue plus other games. Then first-ranked Penn State attacks Miami of a witching brew Saturday. To the top of the eighth inning we go. In a ball game that is now long. All things considered. But then when you've scored ten runs, it takes a while. Daryl Thomas. Dusty Baker and Pedro Guerrero. Randolph, one out. You can see half empty now. People pouring out by the droves. Dusty Baker. Popped him up. For Randolph. Two out. The right fielder, Pedro Guerrero. So Rudy May summoned out of the pen as the fifth New York pitcher. On the job. Here's one of the fellows, very much a prime candidate for the MVP award. Bit slow to get started, but once he got his engine running, he's been tough. Fine looking young hitter. And Ron Say. But sentimentally and for his performance and for his courage, I'd vote for Ron Say. Low inside, two balls and one strike. What about you, Gene? Yeah, I think I'd. Uh, Go with him. He turned the whole series around. Trailing 2 0, hit the three run home run off for Getty. What about you, Keith? I agree. That ball is well hit in the corner. Winfield loping over, and it's in the seats. It's a home run. Well, oh. Pedro Guerrero. Will there be some uh, call for a second ballot here? Might have to take another look. Clutch home run to tie the game Sunday. Tremendous day today. Five runs batted in. And you see him hit a curveball. And it was well hit. So the Dodger right handed power did find the seats in Yankee Stadium tonight, didn't it? Also, Guerrero's triple found the wall at 430. Pitch to Landro. I didn't see Dave back at the fence leaping for that one, which is not meant by way of criticism. Maybe he just couldn't have gotten there. The ball got there so fast. Well, he hit that ball with a lot of top spin, and it looked like he really misjudged it because he went to the line, and the ball actually went out a little bit to right center. That could have something to do with the wind. Just barely got in there. Normally, as you said, you see him trying to make an effort to catch that ball. Landro is called out looking. But the Dodgers add another run. And the lead is big. For Los Angeles back after this word from our local station. Marcus, I see <coughs> whisker. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. Give it the pivot. I try. Next time, Jose, give it the pivot. Atra. The Gillette Atra razor pivots to continually adjust and hug every curve, contour, and angle. No other razor shaves closer and more comfortably than Atra. I give it the pivot. Give it the pivot, Atra. Give it the pivot with Gillette Atra. Ergonomics, the relationship of man to machine, a science practiced in the creation of Chevrolet Cavalier. Cavalier. It provides an inner sanctum of precisely placed instrumentation for immediate readout. And reclining front seats even provide comfort to six foot six members of the human race. Cavalier. Chevrolet Cavalier. Mastery of mind over matter. Now get bigger savings with even lower 12.9% financing. Friday, a three hour music event, American Bandstand's 30th anniversary special. I found a perfect 10, but I still love my perfect 4. Dunlop Generation 4. 
America's most advanced radio. Should be a lasting relationship. I listen to a lot of beats, but listening to KFI certainly has developed my ear for hit music. Now you can get the Carl's Jr. award-winning California roast beef sandwich plus a bag of fries and regular soft drink for just $1.99. That's an award-winning deal. X-Rated TV, tonight at 11. Rodriguez for New York in the bottom of the eighth. Then it'll be Cerrone and Milburn. In the meantime, the Dodger faithful are starting to put on their dancing shoes. Steve Howe in relief of Bert Hooten, trying to save it for him. 9-2. As Howe pitches to Rodriguez, Keith, I was mentioning before, John McMullen, who owns the Houston Astros, is here tonight. Talking with him before the game, he said, we thought we really had the Dodgers on the hook this year, but they have a way of scratching and clawing and coming back, and he said, by the time we reached the fifth game, and we were tied 2-2 after the 2-0 lead. Stroke, going to drop in for a base hit. By the time we reached the fifth game after the 2-0 lead, he said, I got a call early in the morning of the fifth game from a psychic. And I took the call. And I began to do the things the psychic said I should do. And he said, that didn't help. And he lost with Nolan Ryan. Back by Salon. Pedro Guerrero has stepped into some pretty fancy company in World Series history. With his five runs batted in in this game. How about Messrs. Lazari, Dickey, and Kluzuski? Big clue. Ball is hit in the air to right center field and caught by Guerrero. It changed my vote. <laughs> it's Guerrero. That was, he's just playing brilliantly. So many repercussions to this season as it winds down. Those watching this in Cincinnati probably bitter over the fact that their club had the best record in the National League. Feeling they should have been in there, the best season long record. But give the Dodgers their due. They will fight you. Here's Milburn. With one out. And Rodriguez at first base. Popped up on the right side for Davy Lopes. Two down. And here comes Bobby Brown to the plate. That young man won't have a happy memory of this series. He is young. He is a great athlete, and other great ones have gone through this kind of thing. Referring to these two teams, I remember when Gil Hodges didn't get a hit 20 times at bat or more. It was an horrendous series for the late Mr. Hodges. He came out of it. Go back to 1971 when we played the Pirates. Willie Stargell was one of those streaks where just could not hit the ball. And you go back to 1979 and who was the dominant player of that World Series? Yes, right. Willie Stargell. Willie Stargell. Very good analogy. Well, we had Clay Dalrymple in 71 as one of our catchers, and he said when Stargell gets in one of those, I guess, slumps, he just doesn't pick up the ball. They pitch Winfield well. He's helped him out by being very impatient. But I'm sure he'll have another chance sometime. Browns looking to miss for one and two count. Two out, and Rodriguez on first. Steve Howe. Pitching for Los Angeles in relief of, Hoot, of Bert Hoot. Bert went five and a third. It's going to come out of the series at one and one. Yeah. 
Foul tip held by Yeager. Brown is gone. The Yankees are out at the end of eight innings of play. The score is the Los Angeles Dodgers nine, the New York Yankees two. Dave LaRoche in warming up for New York. Scoring summary goes this way. Back to the third. Randolph a home run. One nothing New York. Fourth inning. Baker single. Monday two out single. Yeager an RBI single. Tied it at one. Then in the fifth inning, the run down on it there as New York made it a four to one ball game. And Guerrero's two run triple the big blow. In the sixth inning, the Dodgers pretty much put it away, running it out to eight to one. And then Guerrero's home run makes it nine two as the Yankees got their second run in the sixth inning. And then some very tentative base running denied them an obvious opportunity to at least have three runs on the board. But we are at nine two. And here we go in the top of the ninth. Dave LaRoche, one of two New York players not used prior to tonight in the World Series, the other being Dave Reverie. Yeah. Rick Cerrone being stung foul tip. There were a total of 47 players used in the first five games of the World Series. 50 eligible. The one Dodger was has not been used was Alejandro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's the blooper from LaRoche. Might as well add that. Yeah. Trying to get a laugh out of it. Who threw that blooper pitch in the old days? Rip Sewell or? Yep, threw it. Yep. Rip Sewell. Yep. Did Williams hit the home run in the All Star game off it or? Do you recall that? Yeah. Jaeger fouls it away. Ted belted it. I think it was in Tiger Stadium in 41, I believe. He had a tremendous All Star. To the right side, late break. But the catch is made by Reggie. Well, for Reggetti, there'll be many more seasons. No question about him. He had an unfortunate outing Friday against Fernando Valenzuela, who himself was shaky but came on strongly in the late innings. But Reggetti, he can pitch. He's got a great future. Steve Howe swinging and missing. Dodgers at bat, top of the ninth. One last chance for New York, and they trail by seven. Two strikes. And forever in a day, they're going to talk about Bob Lemon lifting Tommy John after four innings in a 1 1 ball game. Two balls and two strikes to Steve now. Foul back. Especially painful for Bob Lemon. Hi there. Must be the open disagreement and dismay of John at being removed. How strikes out. That's two down. There is Bob. The second baseman, Dave Lopes. Now Dave Lopes with the crowd. Majority of them gone. We had at one time 56,513 in the ballpark. With two away, David takes Hine away for ball one. I doubt there are 20,000 here now. The Yankees will have Randolph Mumphrey Winfield. The fourth man would be Jackson in the bottom of the ninth inning. One and one to 
maybe. On a cold night on the edge of winter in the Bronx of New York, the Dodgers have battered the Yankees. Lopes pops it up out of play on the right side. Count is one and two now on baby. The blooper. Lopes. Sharon <laughs> <laughs> dropped it and throws it up. Well. <laughs> he couldn't resist it, could he? Yeah. <laughs> At the very end, LaRoche put his act together and he's taken it on the road. <laughs> he gets the Dodgers in order in the top of the ninth. One last gas remaining for the Yankees. Well, the America sailing overhead. Harry Chambers Flanner, Charlie Mitchell, Mitchell giving you the picture. And here we'll go as young Steve Howe is going to try to set the Yankees down, and then the Dodgers are going to have, how shall I say this, a heck of a party. <laughs> well, I don't think Tommy, excuse me, Lasorda can eat too much. <laughs> I had lunch with him today, and he had a Frankfurter omelet. Oh, I don't think it's set. Omelet. Yeah, I never heard of it before. It's warm it up. up, and I don't think it's set too well. Undoubtedly, a Dodger it's digestive dog. system. <laughs> Willie Randolph was a home run and a double tonight. Well, there's an old baseball phrase we you're kind of reserved for games like this. Nine in the ninth. And that's what about what it's going to take to to win. Kind of always jokingly say that on the bench. But it is it's happened before. Well it's a left hander and a right hander in the Los Angeles bullpen. I would imagine that's Messrs Forster and Welch. <laughs> Two balls and a strike to Willie Randolph. See the information there on Willie. He's put his name in the World Series record book. Fouls it away. And the few who remain up in the upper decks scuffle for a souvenir. Cynthia Ann Howe wed just over a year to the young man out on the mound, a man from Michigan. Pitches outside, three balls and two strikes. Speaking of Michigan, an old, good, and longtime friend, leftist Bob Eufer, for so many years, the radio voice of the Michigan Wolverines. Michigan, Michigan, Michigan. How much fun he was. We'll all miss him. Randolph has certainly gotten on, Keith. Breaks the record of the babe. Nine walks. Meantime, Peter O'Malley has just reserved Chasen's for the celebration <laughs> party. <laughs> they drew over two million in the short season. There's a strike to Mumphrey. And Jim Palm is rooting for nine in the ninth. If there had not been a strike, I don't think there's a question of the Dodgers would have gone over three million again, I think. Might have broken their own record. Not only that, they have the oil rights under the land. <laughs> yeah. I know you New Yorkers uh, still chafe some at Walter's decision. However, those of us in the West have enjoyed them, and he did make a heck of a deal. They may break. They uh, may break that. it. Might break it, yeah. <laughs> Out 
Fouled out of play. The Dodgers had one in the fourth to tie the Yankees at 1 1 after New York had scored in the bottom of the third. You got three more in the fifth and four in the sixth, one in the eighth. That's how we have a 9 2 score with the Yankee run coming in the bottom of the sixth, the second. Mumphrey swings and strikes out. Bob Euchre will be in the Dodger clubhouse, and undoubtedly, when he comes to get in the car, He's going to be sopping wet. Dave Winfield. All the frustration of the remaining Yankee fans here comes out against Dave Winfield. Now there are mutterings about all the money he was paid and all of the rest. Human nature. Well, I know our club in Baltimore. Yankee fans, by the way, should be congratulated. They behave beautifully here tonight. That was a high towering fly ball to right field. Guerrero. Two down. There was a frisbee and an orange. And nothing else as I can remember. Right, Keith? So far. Behaved very beautifully. Now Reggie with one more cut. Fans are chanting Reggie. Those relative few who are still here, perhaps remembering all the heroics and sensing, that, look at them, that this is the last time, or could be. Out of play. And Reggie with an instinct, a flair for the dramatic, Undoubtedly aware of the very same possibility. Still I'm sure no word on the MVP. We'll probably get it. In fact, we will get it in the clubhouse. Well, Steve Howe has the edge, two strikes, and Cynthia is about to fly out of here. Two strike pitch to Jackson. One and two. Rick Cerrone. As we pan down the Yankee bench, Ron Davis, Dave Rigetti, Charlie Lau just walked by, Barry Foote with the mustache, the big brush mustache. Foul tip. Bangs off Jaeger's face mask. Maybe it's fitting that Reggie be up there now. Such has been the nature of this man's heroics that I reached a point where the fans here at Yankee Stadium thought that every World Series he could do what he did once. Hit three home runs on three swings in a game and maybe in a couple of games. One two. Two two. It's a 9-2 ball game. Steve Howe in his early 20s. Reggie Jackson in his middle 30s. Will not yield. Foul to the right out of play. Five years he's been a Yankee. Years of turbulence, squabbles with Martin, squabbles with the owner, 
Judge Steinbrenner. But somehow, always with the capacity to come through. This year, a great decline in his batting average. And finally, the greatest struggle of all. The struggle with himself. The struggle with self-doubt. The struggle with worry. Was it to be all over for him? And now this. 2-2 two -two with two out in the bottom of the ninth. Well, they're stretching the string as tight as they can in the final moment. Three and two. Lopes over. Boots it, picks it up, safe. And Reggie hobbling, limping. That calf muscle problem that disabled him, apparently rearing its head again. But he gave it all he had going down that baseline. See Randolph scooting by there with two out. Willie is on second base now. Reggie is on first base. And that's when he did it. That last long stride. Davy Lopes apparently has got some dust or something in his eye because he's going down trying to dig the ball out. You see the dirt flying around. Davy is coming to the dugout. They're going to give him an error on the play. Did he hurt himself? That incidentally is the sixth error by Davy Lopes. You see, it is a record. They may get Steve Sachs out to play second base. As Davy walked to the dugout with a great deal of purpose and disappeared. However, he will be part of a championship team and whatever manner of record you might consider errors in a series and in a game. His pain will be alleviated considerably by the ring he'll wear on his hand. You wonder at that moment what Steve Garvey and Reggie Jackson might be talking about, Jim. Looked like they were talking about the ground ball that Lopes missed, that it stayed down. But no, yeah, knowing Reggie could have could Davey be anything. Comes back now. Lopes is back out of the dugout. I think he had a face full of dirt. Garvey might have asked him what size uniform he wears. <laughs> Dodgers, eh? I doubt it. I don't know about that. They're still smarting over the Gold Stenhouse here. That they are. Bob Watson with two on in a nine to two ball game with two out of the bottom of the ninth inning and Steve Howe throws it high. The ending is typical of the whole game. Sloppy. From the Yankee point of view. Welch continues to throw in the Los Angeles bullpen. Watson hits it high in the air. For the center fielder Ken Landro, this should do it. The Dodgers for the 1981 champions of baseball. And so there has not been usual noise making. It became apparent midway in the game, almost with the departure of Tommy John, that the Dodgers would take command. Now the Dodgers leave the field. Keith, I think it's time to Jim, you and me jointly to congratulate them on their acquisition of the World Series championship, Lasorda. Well, kissing Peter O'Malley, too, for that matter, but Mrs. O'Malley, 
and everybody else. For the first time in history, <laughs> we have a three-way dive for the MVP, Guerrero, Say, and Steve Yeager. And under any circumstances, all three were worthy contenders. Each contributed in his own way, sentimentally, maybe Ron Say the most. But anyway, Keith, there it is. Let's join Bob Euchre now in the Dodger clubhouse as the Dodgers win it nine to two, four games to two. Thank you very much, guys upstairs. And we're standing here in a very, very happy Dodger clubhouse, and we are awaiting the arrival of Mr. Peter O'Malley, Al Campanis, and Dodger manager Tommy Lasorda. And standing alongside me, the commissioner of baseball, Mr. Bowie Kuhn, who will make this presentation very, very shortly here in a very, very happy Dodger clubhouse. Bowie? No question about it. It's an exultant Dodger clubhouse, an outstanding comeback win for the Dodgers who came back from everything this year. You know, it seemed the last three series, the Houston-Montreal series, and then falling behind the Yankees 2-0, it seems that's what it took for this Dodger ball club to come back. I think that's right. They seem to face the challenge. They're veteran ball players. They're not put down by being behind. They face the challenge. They came back. Well, we're waiting for Tommy Lasorda here. Tommy, Tommy. I'm going to grab Tom Lasorda over here. Tommy. Tommy Lasorda. Congratulations. Nice going, kid. Tommy Lasorda. We're waiting for Peter O'Malley, the president of the Los Angeles Dodgers, along with Al Campanis, the vice president of player personnel making their way into the Dodger clubhouse here. A very, very happy Dodger clubhouse, as you can well imagine. And Tommy, uh, we talked just a moment ago about the fact that it seemed that the Dodgers had to be two down before they could come back and regroup. That's a great, great victory. This is something that has escaped us for a long time. And we wanted that championship so bad. We wanted to bring it back for Peter and his sister, Terry. Those are the people that have been great to us. Al Campanis, I want to thank all the Dodgers, all the Dodger organization, everyone who played such a vital role in this victory. What a tremendous win. Hang on just a second here, Tommy. We have Mr. Peter O'Malley coming up here, the president of the Los Angeles Dodgers Baseball Club. <laughs> Peter, come on up here. You got to come up here. You might as well jump in here right away. And where is Al Campanis? You got to get up here. You might as well jump in here. And we got to make the presentation here, Mr. Mr. Commissioner. Here's Al Campanis. How you doing? Come on up here. And the Commissioner of Baseball. Now with the presentation of the World Championship Trophy. We get Tommy Lasorda back up here again. Tom, come on back up here. And the presentation now, Mr. Kuhn, if you want to you wanna go ahead here and wrap it on right now. All right, to uh, Peter O'Malley, to Al Campanis, and to this great skipper, Tommy Lasorda, I am very proud to present you the trophy standing right here. <laughs> hey, tastes great! Tastes great! <laughs> I'm proud to present you this trophy emblematic of the 1981 World Championship. And boy, you guys deserved it. You worked all the way to get it. Tremendous comeback win. Thank you, it's your trophy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I just want to say this. All of us feel that we work for a great boss, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very Thanks, much. Tom, Peter. It's a great, great. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm Paul Moyer and Ted Dawson. <laughs> I think I'll love it, huh, Paul? And we are live. Sports Valley in Century City. They may not be dancing in the streets in New York, but they're dancing here tonight. I'll Jenny. tell you, Paul, Paul, a lot of people say that LA fans aren't very energetic. This stuff hardly proves that, doesn't it? Absolutely. These people have been going crazy here all night. Leading cheers and hollering and screaming. And we're gonna be here live with I own LA. Teddy, who would ever thought it they'd come back like this? I'll tell you, when they were down 0-2 to Houston, they were down 1-2 to Montreal, they were down 0-2 to the Yankees. A lot of people never gave up. Obviously, Tommy Lasorda never gave up. These people never gave up. We, of course, will have all the highlights for you later. All right, I can hardly hear you talk or hear myself talk. We're gonna have the whole program. We'll be back live out of I own LA. Ted Dawson, Paul Moyer, now back to the ABC television. Let's go back to the clubhouse. Here they are, Commissioner, and uh, again, I'll, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay, we have something we've never had before. We have three winners of the Most Valuable Player Award, and I think it's very fitting for the great teamwork of the Dodgers that the Sport Magazine and Major League Baseball Award to the Most Valuable Players should go to three men, Pedro Guerrero, Ron Say, and Steve Garvey. Pedro. 
And I want to congratulate you all. A tremendous accomplishment, a real team effort, and you deserve the trophy. We're going to have to have some more to get around all the Arabia. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner, we'd like to, to thank you. We'd like to thank our 10th man around the country, the Dodger fans, the great fans of Southern California. Uh, we want people to know that we won this World Series. The third time was a charm for us, and we thank everyone, and we thank God. Ron sake, step up here, Ron. I think, you know, you surprised everybody by coming back to play tonight. And I got to ask you, when you made the decision to play, you were originally in the starting lineup, but when did you finally decide to play? Well, Bob, I came to the park uh, telling them that uh, everything I had done preliminarily is, had turned out all right. I told Tommy to put me in the lineup. If I couldn't make it, I'd tell him. I had to go through the entire workout, have everything worked out before I was going to make that decision, and I'm just glad that it worked out. Uh, I got a little dizzy running around the bases at one inning where we uh, broke it open to four and one, and uh, I, the uh, lightheadedness couldn't wouldn't go away for me, so I decided to probably time to take a bow. So it's just great. I can't tell you what this means to all of us. And we get Steve Yeager here. Where is he? Here he is, right here. Steve Yeager. A man who had an outstanding World Series, Steve, and I uh, i know you're very, very happy. I know you're proud of him because old catch us together, right? <laughs> I'd say I'm very excited. It's, it's been a great, great pleasure for me to play and, and be a part of this ball club all year long and not, not playing very much. And the little Mike, young Mike Stokes is doing most of the catching, and I get a chance to play in a World Series, and we win. And, and uh, I'd say I feel like I'm, I'm up here. It's going to be a long night ahead of me. Congratulations, Steve. Now let's go to Jim Lampley and Lou Pinello. Thanks very much, Bob. Obviously, the atmosphere in this dressing room is quite different, quiet, but not completely mournful, professional, as you would expect from people with the experience that these guys have. With me, Lou Pinella. And Lou, uh, there was a moment during the ball game in the sixth inning. Your team mounted a threat, and Rick Cerrone was not sent from third base on a fly ball to right field. At that moment, you seemed extremely frustrated. Were you upset about base running in particular, or was it just generally the frustration of the series? No, I wasn't uh, upset about base running at all. It just uh, the way the ball game uh, went, uh, you know, we were blown out. Uh, we really didn't expect that. And it was more frustration than anything else. But uh, I'd like to congratulate the Dodgers. They've been together as a unit for a long time. Uh, they've had some uh, rocky roads here in 77 and 78. And they played very well. And uh, you can't win them all. Uh, I'm just sorry that we lost. Uh, but uh, I'd rather lose here than uh, lose down the line like other clubs did. And uh, hopefully this club will be back next year. They turned it around and did to you what you did in 78, winning the last four after losing the first two. There will be a lot of second guessing of a lot of moves that were made during this series. One of them was Bob Lemon's removal of Tommy John after four innings tonight. What was the general feeling on the ball club and your feeling about that move? Well, I'm not the manager and I can't uh, make moves. Uh, Bob gets ma paid to manage and uh, he decided that uh, Bobby Mercer could uh, give us a quick lift. It, it didn't work at the time, although Bobby hit the ball well. Uh, but that's not when we lost the series. Uh, we go back to game four. Uh, we go back to game five. Uh, we didn't do the job in L.A. We let the Dodgers right back in the series. Uh, I think that was uh, the telling tale, uh, game four and, and game, game five specifically. But uh, yeah, the Dodgers have played so well this series. Everybody talks about how many mistakes we did. Uh, let's give them credit. And uh, uh, they're world champions. And uh, tip our hats to them. Uh, They've been together for a long time, like I said before. Uh, they're a bunch of professionals. They're a bunch of experienced pros, and uh, it showed. We just didn't do the job. They did. Uh, I congratulate them. Okay, thanks very much for spending time with us, Lou, in a difficult moment. We appreciate it. Keith? All right, Jim, thank you very much. The final score tonight, the Los Angeles Dodgers 9, New York Yankees 2, the Dodgers are the world champions of baseball for 1981. Blake and Rubber Company. Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. That's what friendly skies are all about. Tonight's game, a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. The Dodgers will celebrate through the night as champions.